Hope you are doing well. I want us to take a short reading from the book of Psalms, chapter 127. It says, if God's grace doesn't help the builders, they will labor in vain to build a house. If God's mercy doesn't protect the city, all the centuries will circle it in vain. It's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night, toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough. Now God can provide. I want you to see this. It says God can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep. Now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy any time we come into God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy any time we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the word of God, and even as we are about listening to this. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone so everyone can have access to it. Also, by doing this, you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel. Then, don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section. Hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so and you are new here. And then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on it too. You are blessed son. Stay blessed. We believe in the works of Christ. And this is a place for emancipation. Three people. Hallelujah. You will be free. For death cannot dwell in his presence. He is light. Therefore, in the name that is above all names, three of you, please, ushers, I need them here. You will know, three of you, in the name of the Lord Jesus, at the count of three, that devil, that demon cannot stand. No, not in God's presence. Hallelujah. For he gave us authority over unclean spirits to emancipate his people. In the name above all names, at the count of three. One, two, three. There's one of them outside. That's one of them on the floor. Bring them. That devil is a liar. There's one outside. Two are inside. One is outside. One is in this room. That devil. I command him to set you free by the power of the Holy Ghost. For your name is holy. You are holy. Holy Lord. The power of God touches the one person outside under the influence of all kinds of manifestations of darkness. Holy, holy are you, Lord. For your name is holy, holy, Lord. For your name is holy. devil of darkness let this guy go now come out of him in the name of Jesus every foul devil I set you free right now from every yoke of bondage there's one person outside please those outside lift your hands lift your hands those outside by the power of the Holy Ghost, let the light of God shine upon every darkness. In the name of the Lord Jesus, let the power of the Holy Ghost bring out that one person under the captivity of darkness. Be free now.
by the power of the Holy Ghost. It is fire upon you. No devil can stand it. You came here captive in the name of the Lord Jesus. Be free. Hallelujah. Jeremiah. Who is Jeremiah? It's not a verse of scripture, it's someone's name. Jeremiah. Who is Jeremiah? You are Jeremiah. This is not the Jeremiah I'm seeing. There is another Jeremiah. It's taller than you. Jeremiah. If you are Jeremiah, you can come out here. The Lord has a word for Jeremiah. It's a guy. It could be your son name. I don't know. But you're taller than this gentleman here. The Lord shows me a word for Jeremiah. Hallelujah. Well, since you came out, let me at least pray for you. You don't come out here and receive nothing. Bless him, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Jeremiah, please, when you find that person is important, we need to pray for his family. Be seated. God bless you. Hug someone. Tell them I love you. Say it, hug someone, don't sit down. Hallelujah. It's good to see everyone again. Let's get to the word of God. Thank you, Jesus. Sister, look at me. Look at me. No, leave I know. The Lord says I should impart upon you the grace to see. In the name of the Lord Jesus, fire on you by the power of the Holy Ghost. Tonight, I welcome every one of you. This is Koinonia. We've been, we began towards the end of last year considering a series on the full gospel hallelujah someone's auntie just gave birth I'm hearing the cry of a child in a labor room and the Lord says it's somebody's auntie that just gave birth just to announce don't just rejoice for nothing if it's not your auntie we're not lying here don't clap if your auntie is not pregnant. The child will not jump out of the air. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So we began a series on the full gospel. And then we had to pause. And now we'll continue. Hallelujah. The full gospel is a teaching that attempts to harmonize the several revelations of the spirit that had been revealed to the church, especially the church in Nigeria. Hallelujah. And we began to examine the fact that the goal of the full gospel is to bring us into maturity. Hallelujah. That God in his character reveals himself in facets and dimensions. Hallelujah. And that as a result of pressing into God, several people through dispensations have been able to press into some dimensions of God and have come up with certain revelations. Some of them have received exaggerations and imbalances. Hallelujah. And the goal is to be able to bring the church into harmony. And so we began to um, 
outline the fact that we'll examine the seven major doctrines that characterize the Nigerian church. Hallelujah. And we listed them. Number one, the gospel of grace. Number two, the gospel of faith or what we know as the word of faith. Hallelujah. Number three. What's number three? Hallelujah. You've forgotten. The gospel of holiness. Hallelujah. Number four. Demonology. Satan, demonology, and deliverance. Hallelujah. Number five. The gospel of prosperity. And we're in the sixth one. Tonight we'll be considering the gospel of power and the charismatic move of the spirit. You don't want to miss this teaching. This is a solid teaching tonight. The gospel of power and the charismatic move of the spirit. Hallelujah. In a street in the United States of America called Azusa, there was a great man of God who had a lecture and used to teach students called Charles Panham. Hallelujah. Was a great man, fiery man of the spirit. This was during the revivals of the generals. Now they had seen the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. They had seen miracles because people like Alexander Doway, um, people like... Um, uh, you know, um, what's his name? Sorry, yes, Maria Woodward Ita, and several people had carried the fire and the power of the spirit. They had seen miracles, people like Amphi McPherson, the woman who would do stretcher only meetings. So they had seen the revivals of the spirit, but then this gentleman would be teaching. And then racism was very strong in the Western world. Hallelujah. And there was a black one-eyed man. One of his eyes wasn't so good. It wasn't the case. He was black and then he was one-eyed. And so he wouldn't be allowed to join the school of ministry. Hallelujah. And that gentleman would stand outside the class and just be listening. And Charles began to teach them about the mysteries of the kingdom. Began to expound scriptures just like Koinonia. And the guy would stand outside. The only man in the overflow. And he would listen. Hallelujah. Little would we know that that man would be the pioneer of what we know in proper to be the charismatic move of the spirit. What we call the Azusa Street Revival. Hallelujah. It took the fire, the manifestation. It was said historically that the same way the flames of fire fell upon the apostles in Acts chapter 2, that was the exact same way the flames of fire fell. They saw it. The cloven tongues. It fell upon them on that street called Azusa and it sparked a revival of the charismatic move of the spirit. That men in mass, he that told, it used to be single individuals, all right, and then people come to receive. But now, it, there was a widespread manifestation of men demonstrating the character of the spirit. Solid power. They did impossible things in mass. And that fire began to translate from one city to one city, one country to one country, one continent to another. Hallelujah. Then somehow it fell. In Africa also. And our fathers caught that fire. Hallelujah. Great men who walked in power. Not many of them are known. Alongside with men like Apostle Babalola. We only know him because he's a founder of a ministry. But there were many more. Hallelujah. Men and women who caught this fire. Suddenly men began to press into certain dimensions of God. And they saw that the Holy Ghost can take hold of a man. Such that he begins to exhibit his character in that man. Hallelujah. They saw ordinary men doing the deeds of God. Men who you couldn't stand close to them. Hallelujah. Meters away from them you were under the anointing. And they were exhibiting the character of another being. Just like a demon would possess a man. And the man would assume the character of that demon. 
Hallelujah. And the Holy Spirit began to give them insight. And that sparked a dimension of power in the church like we have never seen. And through the years, especially in Nigeria, we had great men and women. Now listen, don't confuse just the working of miracles or just provoking things through faith with the charismatic move. The charismatic move was a demonstration of the spirit. It wasn't just healing alone. Are you listening to me? It was a demonstration of the character of the spirit. Men who did things, it wasn't just healing the sick on the street. Their presence... Devils cried at their presence. They did all kinds of, they performed more miracles unconsciously than they did consciously. Hallelujah. They would get up from a seat, you come and sit back there and devils would leave. It was an awesome display of the spirit. It opened up a new and a strange dimension of the prophetic. Hallelujah. And today we have great ministries who still carry that banner. Ministries like Christ Embassy. A typical replica of the charismatic move of the spirit. Hallelujah. The demonstration of the power of the spirit. In a charismatic move, it's not an individual that just... Are you following me now? Other moves, an individual carried the fire, then others came to receive. But in the, a, charisma, a typical charismatic move has the least person able to dispense... The things of the spirit. There are ministries that you see one Jew, all right? One Jew. If he's not around, nothing happens. But there are ministries that even if you call five people and say, just go out, they will be able to reproduce the demonstration of the spirit. That's a charismatic move. Hallelujah. The word charismatic comes from the Greek word charis, grace. A demonstration of the grace of God upon a man. Hallelujah. Praise God. And a lot has happened to this move over the years. And tonight we'll be examining it. Hallelujah. When you put on your television, many things happen to you. You smile, you get angry. Hallelujah. Because there are different kinds of what we know today to be the charismatic move. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians 2, where's the foundation of this gospel of power? Please follow this teaching tonight. It's powerful. Thank you, Jesus. 1 Corinthians 2. It was that move of the Spirit that brought us into the consciousness of what we know as the presence of God. People didn't know so much about the presence of God and the atmosphere. Hallelujah. Now you hear people say, I sat down. Just like it's happening to some of you. And it's like electricity all over my body. Some of you are shaking, vibrating. This is a manifestation. It was that move that began to bring us into this consciousness. Hallelujah. Many people didn't even know what it stood for. Many of you get to pray and there are, there's all kinds of things happening to you warm sensation cold sensation fire on your eyes your feet your knees you know all of these moves of the spirit first corinthians 2 you don't want to imagine how i love teaching about things like this praise god and i brethren this is paul speaking when i came to you I came not with the excellency of speech. I wish the church in Nigeria can read this verse again and again. Or of wisdom. This wisdom is Sophia, human wisdom. Declaring unto you the testimony of God. Two, for I determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear. And in so much trembling. Verse 4. One to read. And my speech and my preaching were not with enticing words of man's wisdom. But in the demonstration of the spirit and power. Why? Verse 5. That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men. 
Hallelujah. And so this became the foundation of what we know as the gospel of power. Hallelujah. Certain people were tired of a dead religion. Of people coming in, the sick would come in and go back. Demons would come in, escort people to meetings. And they would sing psalms, hymns, spiritual songs for hours. And these demons would go back. People came oppressed and went back oppressed. And the Holy Ghost began to move in certain people and said, there is a dimension of me that must be opened up to the body, the spirit of power, that the power of the Holy Ghost can be accessible for a believer to wrought victories in righteousness. Hallelujah. Another scripture, 1 Corinthians 14. 4, sorry, 1 Corinthians 4. There are great ministries that have this as their slogan. Ministries like Spirit Embassy, Hubert Angel. 1 Corinthians 4.20. Are you there? One to read. For the kingdom of God is not in word. One more time. What do you understand by that statement? Hallelujah. What do you understand by that statement? If I say Jimmy is a man, not a woman. Is that clear enough? He said for the kingdom of God. In other words, the reality of the kingdom of God is expressed in the midst of men, not just by words. Words are not sufficient to be able to articulate the reality of the kingdom. It is in the demonstration of power. When the power of the Holy Spirit is made visible, comes into the scene, then people are able to see the reality of the manifestation of the glory of God. Are you following me now? And Paul said, when I came to you, you know why Paul said that? Because Paul was an intellectual. He was not just a dummy. I hope you understand. But he said, when I came, I didn't just come with oratory, the ability to combine words and speak nicely. For that alone is insufficient to bring you into the reality of the kingdom experience. He said, when I came to you, I did not come with the excellency of speech, but I demonstrated something among you that proved the reality of the kingdom. Hallelujah. So the gospel of the kingdom or the gospel of, of, of power seeks to tell the church that there is more to the manifestation of the kingdom of God than just speaking. Are you listening to me? Just a nice, well-prepared sermon. And that true transformation that the body of Christ will not come into the full realization of the kingdom experience, both as um, an evangelical experience and as a charismatic Pentecostal experience just with talking. In other words, you can't keep talking to people about divine health. Are you listening to me? You can't keep talking to people about healing. You can't keep talking to people about certain things. The gospel of power tells you that there must be a demonstration. That the kingdom of God is the expression of that kingdom in Number one, words. But number two, it is validated with power. I said the kingdom of God. In other words, the manifestation of the influence of the Father is not just the issue of talk. Are you listening to me? Miracles, signs, wonders, breakthroughs. These are the visible manifestations of the glory of God. Please let me tell you something. The manifestation of the glory of God is not a cloud. It's not some mist. Listen, the beauty of all those things is that you leave that place with an experience. Are you listening to me? Say kingdom experience. Kingdom experience is not just in words. If I ask you now, what was the first message? That was preached when you came for koinonia. You cannot even remember. But if I ask you, tell me one remarkable experience. You say, ah, I remember I brought one brother that was just shouting. I won't keep quiet. Five minutes later, that guy was praying in tongues. That's an experience. Are you listening to me? People can forget talk and words. But an experience initiates them into the reality of anything. Hallelujah. This is why when you go to a herbalist. He doesn't do too much of talking, correct? He just bamboozles you with experiences. 
And you have to just calm down and say, this man is serious. He's not a talkative. For instance, as soon as you enter his place, you see him and then you don't see him again and then you see him. And he says, sit down. You say, Baba, I'll do anything you want me to do. One experience. Hallelujah. You're going to be understanding certain powerful spiritual keys about the gospel of power. So miracles, signs, and wonders are the visible manifestation of the glory and the kingdom. Without the manifestation of the miraculous, I'm telling you the gospel of the kingdom, Christianity, what we know as um, Christianity is powerless. If an unbeliever stands and tells you that I believe in whatsoever I believe, and a Christian comes and says, look, Jesus is Lord over all. He came and demonstrated victory over sin and over Satan. Hallelujah. And you are able to demonstrate it. That there is this gentleman. Come sir. Just a minute. Hallelujah. That this guy comes in a drunkard. Comes in drinking and smoking. And one encounter with the power of God. No withdrawal symptoms. This guy does not have appetite for liquor again. Doesn't have appetite for smoking again. There is an experience. Are you listening to me? This guy, if you ask him to preach, he will tell you his experience. You know why many believers do not have messages? We lack the experience of the kingdom life. Hallelujah. This is why we borrow messages from YouTube, Google, all kinds of things. Authentic Christianity is supposed to be a byproduct of a tangible experience where you encounter the reality of the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. And so it's not enough to say this is this, this is that. There must be a proving, a validation. And this is why the Christian experience of many believers is not strong. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We can sing and chorus, Jesus is Lord. What manner of man is Jesus? He made the sea to, to, uh, to what? He made the sea to. He made the blind to see. He made this and that to happen. And many people with unbelief, he made the blind to. But you see, it has not translated into a real Christian experience. So, our unbelief has gotten so used to those songs, we don't even expect it. And when one person gets healed, they say, how are you sure? Are you sure they didn't pay this guy? Oh, Jared, these people. You see, because we do not even expect that there is an experience. When a student is in school, you do what we call practicals, correct? When they are teaching you are sleeping, they say, mix this with this, you are just yawning. But when you get to the lab, when you try it yourself, you just smile because that experience has crystallized in your mind. We have a powerless church because many believers do not have their knowledge of God backed up by an experience of the kingdom life. So we talk about the Holy Spirit without any experience of him. We talk about the concept of divine health. We talk about the concept of prosperity. We talk about the concept of the move of the spirit. That God can transform a man. But there is no experience. Say after me, the kingdom of God is not in words, but in power. Hallelujah. And the reason why the manifestation, the gospel of power is cast in certain Christian circles is because of the sacrifice. Listen to me. Because of the sacrifice it takes. Many people are unwilling to contend for more with God. And so whatever experience they've had of God, for many it's just a salvation experience and a little of theological experience and we camp around there and the more we read theological books we believe that our knowledge of theology is equivalent to the knowledge of god and you see someone tells you have been a theologian for the past 10 years there's nothing you will tell me in this bible that i will not see but you know that this guy is being influenced by the spirit of anger he's telling you he knows everything in the bible one minute later he just slaps you 
And then he says, I, 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 I do not even know. This guy needs, he needs help. Now he's telling you, I know everything. Hallelujah. And so we have many nice, wonderful messages. They give you the background. They give you every well-prepared sermon. But with no power to change people. Not even salvation. And you hear a lot of preachers say now, with this message, if you know you are not born again, I pray that as you go back home, the Lord will help you to do something about this message. Can, can you imagine? This is supposed to be an experience. Imagine an evangelist come on the pulpit. Imagine Jake's for God's sake. Comes up and preaches. I mean with power. And says, Jesus, save them. He healed them. He delivered them. So now as I wrap up my message, I, I want to encourage everyone who came from far and near for this mega crusade to take seriously what I've said. I, I ask the Lord to strengthen you and uh, bring you to a point where you can see reason in what I've said. Now, hold on, hold on. You are talking to someone who just left his shrine. Are you following me now? This guy just left his shrine with a solid tangible experience and he came and met you making noise one PA one protocol here one protocol there and you stood and you were making noise and his native doctor calls him and said please come back just forget about these noisemakers hallelujah Christianity begun supernaturally with power, a woman without the aid of a man conceives. That's, a, that's an experience. Hallelujah. A man walks on water, defying certain laws, dies and brings himself back to life. The entire span of the Christian experience is rooted not just in word, but in power. The demonstration of power. Now please listen because I'm, I'm soon, oh you will enjoy this message tonight, believe me. Whenever I say power, many church folks, all you just think about is somebody falling down. Let's do it. Come. Two people. One usher, one somebody. Pastor Alpha, you are an usher. Come. Come, sir. Do you know how to fall down? All right, just fall down. No, no, no. Hold on. You are getting it. Okay, are you ready? Now. Oh, yeah, fall down. This is what the church calls power. Shame on us. This is not what I'm calling power. So if you are thinking I'm talking of falling down. No, that's not. You are, you are in for a shocker. This is not power. For many people, this is just church jamboree. Because demons can do that. A powerless Christianity will not advance the kingdom of God. Many of you are not here because of our nice messages. Something happened to somebody you know, you, you, you know and you said, Kai, no, I will come and find out. Even if it's not true. We had a gentleman, Sadiq Ibrahim, remember him? Some of you. That guy slept in the grave three days to get the power of invincibility. Three days in the grave. Saw dead men wake up and come out of their graves. They told him to lie down there. You don't get up. You don't do anything. The spirit of the, of the man in the grave that he was lying, they said they wanted it to come upon him. After three days, this guy got up. He could look at a baby, like my little sister that came and shared testimony here, and shoot her. No conscience. That guy came for koinonia and sat down outside. So imagine if we just came. A beautiful suit. Say, Hallelujah, somebody. Now, this guy slept in the grave. Three days. A Christian experience. Elijah said, look, we are talking too much. If God be God, let him be known. If Baal be God, let him be known. Let's go and meet upon the mountain and settle this case once and for all. He said, the God that answers by fire, that is God. Elijah was so confident. He asked the people, he said, shout, maybe he's sleeping. Maybe he went strolling. 
And then when it was his time, he said, set me 12 stones. Let me show you something. I didn't come to discuss jargons with you. Set me 12 stones. He said, pour water on it so that you won't say by some chemical analysis, something happened and so pour water on it. The Bible says fire came from heaven, licked up the water, burnt everything. And Elijah said, now that you know, none of you will survive. He said, follow them. And he slayed all of them. Hallelujah. The church was advanced because men, you think the disciples were intelligent people. They didn't go to any Bible school. Jesus sent them. He said, go in my name. He said, as you go, go to the Lordship of Israel. Heal the sick. Cast out devils. Raise the dead. Cleanse the lepers. Freely you have received. Freely give. The Bible says they came back rejoicing. Their first thing, he didn't say they clapped for me. I didn't know I could speak Greek like that. He said, even the demons, that was their first testimony, were subject to us through thy name. Hallelujah. Many, we have all kinds of justifications because of the sacrifice it takes to contend for that dimension of God. So many people begin to give excuses. They say, it's not my calling. Did you see Jesus sending the 70? What did he call them? He told all of them, as you go, do the same thing. Listen, the fact that there are caterers does not mean every woman should not know how to cook. Correct? There are people called into certain ministries. The gifts of healing. But it does not mean, well, don't you cook in your house? All of these things people give for lack of fire. We try to give all kinds of sugar-coated messages. Criticizing people who are moving in genuine power. Now, note, note, note genuine power because I have another well-prepared dimension. You should know me by now. Hallelujah. We have been trained to contend with anything that is above and beyond our ordinary. How can a man just get healed? The lady shared a testimony now. How can an ovarian cyst disappear? Some of you are just saying, Jare, go and test with a real doctor. You see it? That's, that's a problem with a lot of people. You never were surprised how the growth formed from nowhere. But how it went down is what is surprising you. Someone will be sitting and his hand will start swelling. Nobody will ask from where the swelling came from. But when it goes down, we begin to complain. Someone had an ear. The ear starts eating up. You never say, is this not supernatural? But when no ear starts coming back, he said, like, like this one. At least Jesus, oh, we know. Malchus' ear, this is Jesus. So the church has been trained to reject anything that comes with power. But it is in that demonstration of power that Satan is silenced. Moses was a stammerer. He said, oh God. And God was angry. He said, in God's mind, he's saying, you don't need too much of talking. You don't know the experience I'm giving you. Pharaoh does not need English or Hebrew. Pharaoh needs a demonstration. Ten signs. And Pharaoh let them go. Not jargons. Ten signs. Demonstrations of solid power. Today in the church in Nigeria, learn how to speak your English. Know how to add your vowels and put all the consonants together. May God increase and bless you. But let me tell you the truth. When it comes to real transformation, if you want to be part of what God is doing, you need more than that. Brother, demons don't hear English. There's one language they understand. The Bible says, through the greatness of thy power, will thy enemies submit themselves to you. Not through the greatness of your English, through the greatness of your power. Hallelujah. When Moses went before, before Pharaoh, it was a contention of mantles, not mouth. They threw it on the mantle of the spirit and the mantle of witches. That was a contention. Are you listening to me? The gospel of power. Powerless Christianity will not advance the kingdom. One of the reasons why many churches have complained when they see crowds like this, for instance.
They say, are you sure? These people are just coming like that. That's the point. Read Mark 1, 2, 3. I don't have time. I have other things. This is still an introduction. There are other things I want to talk about. Listen. In every man, we have a community and a nation and a world. Humanity is always in need of solutions. Are you listening to me? Let me give you the secret of solid ministry. Humanity is always in need. This is why God sends us as the light of the world and the salt of the earth. For as long as there is power upon you to meet the needs of men, they will come from everywhere to hear the word of the Lord and to be blessed and transformed. A native doctor is in the bush. I, I, I spoke to a guy, I think I shared it with you, uh, Jakes. I, I spoke to a guy who came last week this guy had gone to almost all the major shrines in this country. Someone took him there. Hallelujah. He went to the shrines. And they took him to some pastors and they couldn't do anything about it. Hallelujah. Couldn't do anything about it. Shame on the church for allowing Satan just to prevail. And we laugh over it. And we say, I'm not called into this area. It's not my calling. It's not this and that. Which one is your calling? What is your calling? To talk? Say my own is just to counsel people. Don't you know that people act the way they act as a result of the influence of demons? Say amen. amen. According to Mark 1, 2, and 3, the biblical strategy for publicity to bring unbelievers and to bring people is the miraculous the biblical i'll show you let's let's go to the book of mark quickly anywhere there is a true manifestation of the kingdom and the glory of god now don't you say crowd does not matter crowd does not matter in that um god judges from a higher perspective but without the people who will you touch the ministry is not to seats are you listening to me all through the life of Jesus till he went to heaven, he always had people around him that he could minister the word to. Mark. Mark 1. Sorry. Are you there? Verse 21. The first recorded miracle of Jesus. As soon as he was commissioned, without delay, he casted out devils. Without delay. Mark 1, 21. And they went into Capernaum and straightway on the Sabbath day he entered into the synagogue and taught. And they were astonished at his doctrine for he taught them as one that had authority and not as the scribes. And there was in a certain, in the synagogue, a man with an unclean spirit. Are you, is that in your Bible? So who does Jesus confront in the synagogue? An unclean spirit. Question. The demons in him, why do they allow him to come to the synagogue? Didn't they know that Jesus was going to be there? Saying, let us alone. What have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? And so on and so forth. Verse 25, one to read. And Jesus rebuked him saying, hold thy peace and come out of him. And when the unclean spirit had torn him and cried with a loud voice, he came out of him. Let's see the effect. 27. And they were all amazed in so much that they questioned among themselves saying, what thing is this? And what new doctrine is this? For with authority commanded he even the unclean spirits. And they do obey him. 28. Please read it if it's in your Bible. And throughout the whole region of Galilee. Question. Who were those who took that news to the region of Galilee? It's in your Bible. One demonstration of the reality of the kingdom. Every time people are touched by God, they are too grateful to keep quiet. The gospel was not supposed to be a silent thing. There is an effect that the power of the Holy Ghost is supposed to do in you that will stop you from being quiet. That's how the gospel spread. In the days of God's generals, their newspapers were full of the exploits of the church. Correct? 
But right now, our exploit, our church is, is full. If you see a story about a pastor, is how he raped a lady, stole from a church, did something, or one, one saga somewhere happening. Or that they suddenly caught him, wanted to rob his oil, and then so one member caught him, and there's trouble. And in the evening, verse 32, I want you to help me. Maybe I'm the one who is not seeing it well. And in the evening, when the sun did set, they brought unto him all that were diseased and all those who were. For those of you who say, ah, whenever, the, I mean, the power of God comes and people, the, people are being delivered. They say, oh, there's no need for this. Go and read your Bible very well and tell me whether Jesus did not cast out devils. Hallelujah. Mm. Those who were possessed with demons. Verse 33 again. One to read. Look at this description. A city gathered at the door. At the door. At the door. Jesus just sat down quietly. And they were just bringing the sick. And the sick were going out. They saw one madman that had troubled people in the city. They said, come please, this way. The next thing, the guy came out saying, say, how are you? Good afternoon. Another man next, he entered and came out. These guys entered the city and people say, no, we have to come and see. Critics say, I will go. Women tied their day. Let's, see, let's go and see this thing. And the whole city, no posters, no mic, no, P, no PR department. Are you following me now? The biblical tool to attract people to see the works and the wonders of God. Is the manifestation of power. Hmm. Today there are evangelists in the world. Who do a lot of things and do not believe in the ministry of power. If an evangelist does not believe in the power of the Holy Ghost. He's not an evangelist. He should go and sit down. He should be a lecturer in a Bible school. Verse 34. And he healed many that were sick. Is that correct? Of diverse diseases. And did what? Cast out many demons. They were not small. And permitted not the demons to speak. Because they knew him. Hallelujah. Now verse 37. He had to be running away from people. And when they had found him. They said unto him what? All men seek for you. In other words Jesus was hiding. The man said, you better hide. I have a serious problem. I will sit down and die. Let me tell you, if you offer real solution, people will travel from anywhere and come to receive. If you plant your church in a river, Habal is not living in a river. What takes people there? They drop their jeep and trek from here to like ABU gate. A dignified man. He said, I must get out of this problem. I'm tired. See, let me tell you, Every time you criticize the power of the Holy Spirit, the genuine power of God, you are a wicked person. Because you do not know those who are touched and those who are blessed. You see everybody seated in Koinonia. You don't know how many people have gone through things. Whenever you see demons leaving people, you don't know the relief this brings. Hallelujah. I assure you, if you are not receiving anything, you would have been tired of coming here by now. It's not because you love me. That may be part of it, but there is a bigger reason. You know that God is in the midst of his people doing wonders. Hallelujah. Let's finish up. All men seek for thee. 38. And he said unto them, let us go into the next town that I may preach there also. For there, therefore came I forth. Are you ready now? Verse 39, one to read. I want to show you the secret of real ministry that many pastors have not read. And I'll tell you why soon. 39, and he preached in their synagogues throughout all Galilee and did what? There we see it again. There we see it again. He preached in their synagogues. It looks like the synagogue had a lot of demons. He casted out demons. Because the talkatives were speaking Greek. 40. And there came a leper to him, beseeching him and kneeling down to him, saying unto him, If thou will, thou can make me clean. And Jesus moved with compassion, put forth his hand and touched him and said unto him, I will. 
be thou clean. Hallelujah. 43. Please read something. And he, and he strictly charged him and forthwith he sent him away. And he said unto him, See that thou sayest nothing to a man, but go thy way, show thyself to the priest, and offer for thy cleansing those things which Moses commanded for a testimony. 45. Please read. One to read. In so much that Jesus could no longer enter openly into a city. Today, we have mechanisms of holding people by force. You don't come to our church again. Go back and read your Bible. Shame on the church for this nonsense we do all around. There are churches today that have ID cards to make sure their members don't go any other place. Insecure men of God moving here and there. They won't go and study the Bible and contend for true spiritual power. They just see you in one fellowship and they come. They say, me, what I'm giving you is not enough. Of course it's not enough. That's the only reason why they'll run around looking for real solution. So, so the prophecy I'm giving you didn't work. It didn't work. You are just too afraid to tell him. It didn't work. Because God didn't send him. He's not a prophet. Pressure made him to say what God didn't say. Hallelujah. There are, there are all kinds of membership jargons. Go to places like Abuja and see. A building like this is another church. One is another church. Their ushers are standing behind one another. If somebody's coming, they say, hello, how are you? God bless you. And immediately they finish. The pastor calls them and queries them. And say, when has the church of God become a marketing jargon? Shame on the church. We spend millions of God's money and newspapers. Come and see the man of power. You are not a real man of power. Because when Benihin is coming to Nigeria, all the newspapers beg for an audience. What is wrong with you? You are running where God has not sent you. Powerless Christians who will not humble themselves and listen. Hallelujah. The Bible says Jesus was begging. And say, don't tell anybody. Let me tell you something. Have you had people complain and say, it's because our church is too far. For say our church is near. It's not true. It's not true. It's not true. All those things are just jargons. It's not true. Say, for say, God gave me a land in Port Harcourt or Lagos. Bah, I would have been suffering. You will be surprised. You think people are idiots. You see, men of God are so used to deceiving people that they think people don't have brains again. Do you know what it means? For someone to prepare from 4 o'clock and run and come and stand and say he's coming for koinonia. You really believe he's just coming because of certain men? And families, there are people here right now that came some from Abuja. There are people already calling me, coming from all over this country for the miracle service. You really believe that they like the way my face looks? Or they don't have anything to do with their lives? For the kingdom of God... Is not in the excellency of speech, but in the demonstration of power. John sent. He said, go and tell Jesus. Go and ask him. Are you the one to come? It was the same John that said that the one who sent me said upon the one whom I see a dove. He is the lamb. He's the one that said, behold the lamb. Now John was under pressure and he said, go and ask this guy. In other words, I expect a level of demonstration. Now I'm in the prison. I've not seen it. Is he the one? And the moment they spoke to Jesus, we'll read that later on. Jesus just looked at them and said, watch me. He healed the sick, cleansed the lepers, healed people and said, go and tell John what you have seen. In other words, what in your law should be the character of the Messiah? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's read verse 32 of chapter 3, Mark. Are you there? 32. And the multitude sat about him. There you see multitude again. Is that correct? And the multitude. Jump to verse 4. Number 1. And he began again to teach by the seaside. And there was gathered to him a what? Great multitude. Are you seeing there again? The desert multitude. 
The mountain, multitude. The seaside, multitude. Everywhere, multitude. Why? Because there was a manifestation of the kingdom. A manifestation of the kingdom. Hallelujah. So why don't we have Christians coming for, to our faculties? Because you people are not praying for a demonstration of the kingdom. Now when I talk about a demonstration of the kingdom, I'll show you what I mean. A demonstration of the kingdom is not falling down. Many people have reduced the Christian experience so that when you are saying in the name of Jesus, your days of captivity are over. Everybody's looking. Nobody fell down. They just said, this word, Jerry. This guy should go and sit down. Hallelujah. Miracles draw the people and then Jesus saves them. The biblical tool for evangelism is the miraculous. Whenever there is an outpouring of miracles, an outpouring of signs, wonders, breakthrough, genuine breakthrough, that people come in and they receive the touch, the tangible hand of God, transformation in their lives, their families, their finances, their health, their understanding, their passion for God, then the kingdom has come. Hallelujah. Miracles are the tools that draw people to Jesus. And then the reality of the gospel reaches out to them. The clearest manifestation of the glory of God is in miracles and signs and wonders. Not many people have had the opportunity to go to crusade grounds. Otherwise, if you go to a typical village crusade ground, you will appreciate the place of miracles. Because while you are interpreting, the people are sleeping. In their mind, they are waiting for something more than your talk. You say, hallelujah, hallelujah. And the other person says, we are so they are sleeping. They are not interested in your talk. While you are talking, it's only the women that will say, mm, and that's just because they have a heart for God. But when one crippled person lifts his crutch every sleeper will wake up sleep will disappear one time hallelujah when a, a known herbalist in that land comes in and you look at the man and cast out that devil and the man goes to sit down let me tell you something the next day you will have to beg for a bigger venue Reinhard Bonke was giving a biography of his ministry. He said God sent him to go to one African country and start a crusade. When he went there, he met a pastor with just a little congregation of maybe about a hundred people. And he said, God told me to go to the stadium. The pastor laughed at, at him and said, me, I have not gone to the stadium. I don't have that kind of grace. Reinhard Bonke prepared and brought all his team. They rented the stadium. And when he got in, he saw only the church members of that man. Imagine a stadium that can take about 50,000 people. And then you see just one little seat that is for dignitaries. With the members of the church, they are just singing. Renard Bonke said he was disappointed. Nobody knew him. Why? It's not that nobody knew him. Nobody had seen the demonstration of the kingdom through him. Because he said right there, he began to minister to them. And about five or seven people notably sick people were there he said by the next day the crowd had turned to about 5,000 people news news let me tell you something genuine news does not need GSM to spread genuine if it's genuine news you just hold on for instance if they say your accommodation is open this night ladies many of you even if you don't have phone you will hear that's how the miraculous can bring people to Jesus Christ Somebody will go out of his way to travel a distance and say, I have a story for you. God did something in the life of my mother. My father was divorced. He vowed that he would never come back home. But the prayers went on him and this guy cannot sleep again. He's calling my old mother, my uh, uh, sweetheart or my honey or my sugar. And your old mother say, hey, hey. The demonstration of the kingdom. When two of them hold their hands and come to church, your unbelieving brothers will start thinking twice. 
Hallelujah. Say, I believe in miracles. Say it, I believe in miracles. I believe in the power of the Holy Ghost. Your neighbor is involved in witchcraft and divination and all kinds of things. And you pack in and you do an introductory prayer session around the house to highlight them that one who carries true fire has come. Satabalia, and they receive the reverberation from their house. And then you go out and meet the man and say, I'm your neighbor. And by the grace of God, I've paid for two years. The man knows for sure that he's in trouble in that remaining two years. When people say, hey, this woman, they gossip about it. They say, this woman is a witch. I saw her. What are you doing about it? And you see believers so helpless. Your child is coughing. They say, I know they want to make money with him. Hey, 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 this is how this boy will die now. What you need is a gospel of power. That an ambassador steps into that place and says, what is going on here? And they say, this woman wants to, they want to do this and that from the village, work out kinds of witchcraft. You say, really? He say, oh, thank God we are here. It's a simple issue. Let the boy, see the Bible says, Jesus entered and saw Peter's mother-in-law sick with a fever. The Bible didn't say he prayed. He held and lifted. I said, go and serve us, Jerry. We are hungry. Power. Kapatalabaya. Through the greatness of thy power, will thy enemies submit themselves. You just go to the realm of the spirit and find out how many demons and principalities work every week to make sure you don't get blessed here. And, wonder, and then you wonder why we live as if Satan does not exist here. Because Jesus is alive. Hmm. Hallelujah. We travel around all the time. All the time. Many of you, where you want to travel, you don't talk. So let me not sin against God in case anything happens. Sorry, sir. You the last person sitting here. Hmm. What kind of life is that? You look at the driver and see one guy with a drowsy eye. Say, me, let's ask, oh, is this guy well? Is this guy well? See, we need a church with genuine, authentic power. Hallelujah. The miraculous opens up the hearts of people to receive Christ. That's why after the miracle service, when we make altar calls, there are some brothers you see coming out. You know it's God that brought this one. The way the guy is even coming out. He's even surprised. What is bringing me out? And he's still coming. You see him standing and wondering. As if someone brought him out. Of course. It's the power. It's called anakazo. The compelling power of the spirit. Hallelujah. But the balance here is that you don't center your ministry around miracles. You center your ministry around Jesus. This is where my preaching of the balance starts. Because you see, the miraculous is not a teaching, it's a demonstration. You just teach it to help people comprehend. Hallelujah. So when your ministry is all about miracles, miracles are a tool. Are you listening to me? Hear me. If your demonstration of miracles does not lead men to Jesus Christ. God is not glorified in that activity that is going on. Please write it. If at the end of all your display of power and falling down and rolling and sweeping the carpet, people do not come to the genuine knowledge of Jesus Christ, you did not glorify God. I don't care how charismatic it was. So you don't center your ministry around Jesus, around miracles, but Jesus. He said, if I be lifted up, if I, not if wheelchairs be lifted up, not if crutches be lifted up, not if tumors be lifted up, not if dead people be lifted up, if I, Jesus, the son of the living God, be lifted up, I will draw all men. So miracles are tools. Are you listening to me? They are tools. That bring people to Jesus Christ. If they do not come to the practical 
saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, then something was wrong. Hallelujah. But now we see that there is what? An error in the church. Still among the charismatics. That an emphasis has switched away from who? Jesus Christ. I want to ask you a question. How many times have you had preachers mention the name of Jesus in many pulpits? For many people it was last year. And they preached four times into the new year. They raised offering. They talked about vow. They talked about first food. Prophet's offering. But they did not mention the name Jesus. Hallelujah. They played documentaries for hours about the man. They just saw slow motion. He stands and heals the sick. And does every kind of thing he wants to do. And then he does everything. And at the end of it, nobody says anything about Jesus. And people cheer the man and he's so happy. Jesus is absent. Hallelujah. Jesus must become the center of our ministry. Not apostles, not prophets, not miracles, not money, not wisdom. But Jesus. Say Jesus is the center of my life. And everything that I do. Say Jesus is the center in Koinonia. Yes. May God forbid the day that we we'll forget about Jesus. And start marketing ourselves. And marketing power. And marketing Joshua Selman. And marketing all kinds of things. May God forbid that day. Where Jesus will stop becoming our focus. Either because of the levels of grace that he has brought us. And if I be lifted up. I will draw all men by myself. The reward for lifting him up. Is that he grants the miracles that bring the people to him. Because he said I will draw. Hallelujah. There are so many people in the church right now. Now listen. Because of this pressure of miracles, miracles. Right now, listen. There are so many people under pressure. It takes a while, write it, for the miraculous to begin to manifest in your life. It takes the dealings of God. It takes the pruning of God. You must be proven genuinely. I'm telling you, if you want to walk in authentic power, Authentic power responds to a, a, a dealing with God. Many of you see men of God who are anointed. Hear their stories and their sacrifices first. And then you will know why God has rewarded them. If I begin to tell some of you the sacrifices and the things that are done in the secret for the power that you see. Forget about the suit. Don't be deceived by it. Behind every glory there is a story. Are you listening to me? I'm talking of authentic Christian power. But right now, there are many men of God. They don't talk about Jesus. They have no regard for the word. But there are terrible manifestations of miracles in their churches. Something is wrong. Say after me, something is wrong. And this is what I'll be rounding up with. We'll stop wherever we can stop. It's a series. I don't want to rush it. I want to take it in depth so that you get it. Hallelujah. As a result of the craze, knowing now that the miraculous brings members. And for many pastors, more members means more what? More money. Thank you. So you know. More members mean more money. More honor. More prestige. When you stand in the midst of other pastors, say you have many members. That is yes, more boy. Why can I sit with you? How many? 5,000. I say, yeah, we can sit now. I'm trusting God for expansion. And you hear men of God sit down. How many members do you have? How many members? And then the other one who has only 30 gets intimidated. And the guy says, you see. Three months later, the guy is breaking. He says, he caught one principal. Oh God, tell us. Tell us what principle did you get? Hallelujah. The tragedy of witchcraft in the church let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. I will not hide it from you. I love you too much to lie to you. Many men of God, you see, manifesting what they call power. 
have gotten these things from demons and devils and witches. Right now, there are all kinds of any man, whether prophet or not, if you cannot see, if you cannot hear, sorry for you. And the Bible says there are people with itching ears and they love it so. Right now, when people come in for meeting and they see the man of God say, let's go straight to the word. They say, ah, no falling down, no nothing. Uh, oh God, let's go. You just go this way. I'll come out. We'll meet later and disappear from this place. Say, what kind of boring man is this? And so you put pressure on the men of God. Although they are still walking with God. See, let me tell you something. There are three kinds of men. There are three kinds of error in the body of Christ that God must resolve. Especially for a lot of people who want to just jump into ministry. Hold on and listen to me first. Number one, we have witches and wizards in the church. Direct occultists. They have sold their souls to the devil. God didn't call them. They are agents of darkness. They came from the pit of hell. That's category one. Their job is to come and mislead a lot of people. They are occultists. Are you listening to me? Different men of God. I'm telling you, they have mixed their wine with water. I read an article, verified article. You read it, Jankfa, yesterday. About a woman in Port Harcourt who empowers most of the men of God in Abuja, including a popular bishop. Now, I don't just read junks and come and talk to you. Are you listening to me? I have common sense. I know that this message will go as far as can go. So if I talk to you, these things are verified. Hallelujah. Thank God for this message. Great men of God. It's a, it's a cult. It's a movement. Registration fee is 100,000, first and foremost. And which is easy when they collect your offering for two weeks. Is that not enough? Don't pity them. It's your offering that, that went there. After that, what happens? The Bible, I said the Bible, um, the article Praise God. The article says that they now commit all kinds of immoral acts with that woman. Shameful, immoral acts that should not even be mentioned. And then after that, there are different kinds of oil. And according to, this is somebody that was going to be initiated and had to draw back. The most popular oil right now is called seeing oil. They wash your eyes with it. And you just look. You can see everything. Hallelujah. Everything. That's why you see every man just looks. You are this. You who just got married. And he moves in dramatic accuracy. Because with that in two weeks, he can triple the membership. Because the truth is people have needs. Are you listening to me? People have genuine needs. When they see real solutions, they will go. They will go. They have genuine needs. And this man is receiving money. Of course, if somebody wants to spend 10 million on his health and you got him healed, ah, can't he take half of it and say, Pastor, I would have gone to India. Now you have helped me. Let me reduce your body in the ministry. If if in one day you can make five million, is that not a lucrative business? Answer me. And then he buys another one. Rub it on his eyes. These men sleep with women and do all kinds of things, minutes to their, their ministration to maintain some of these powers. Please listen to me. Hallelujah. Then the next one, they call it do as I say. Aren't you amazed at how daft the members of many churches are. Anything they ask them to do. The newspaper one time recorded how that some people, members went to church naked. Remember the article? Some people don't read newspaper. Hallelujah. Members. Imagine a father and a mother say, are you ready now? Kids, let's go. That's what happened. Madness in the body of Christ. They entered the church naked. No, see, when I say naked, I'm not talking of Jesus of Nazareth kind of naked. Naked. Can you imagine everybody in Koinonia here naked? What is wrong with us? Yes, but that's what happened. That cannot be normal. The Spirit of God is not an idiot 
We have misrepresented the Holy Spirit to the, to the world. God is, not, God is not a daft person. Please, let's not make Jesus Christ look like a stupid person. Hallelujah. And when you get that kind of oil, you can do anything to anybody. That's why you can see a man who buy his house. They just cut the scissors of the house. Next week is the pastor that packed inside. Brother, what happened? They say seed. Now, I'm not saying there's nothing wrong. When, when you see genuine things, you celebrate them. Manipulation and witchcraft. I was told of a man of God that saw a beautiful plot of land belonging to one of his members. The guy just pressed, hey, hi. And the lady said, what is wrong? Now? He said, you will die now. And she called her brother in UK. He said, let's give this man the land. Though. They gave the guy land. He erected a structure quick on it. Now they are, they are in the court. The land is worth 80 million. The man manipulated them into sowing it to him. What if that man were your father? You will not enjoy for years, Kenan. Because one man of God has come to manipulate your, your, the, des the financial destiny of the family. Are you listening to me? And then the next oil is specifically for ladies. Hallelujah. According to the article, they say it's called touch and follow. I have been amazed at the, the vulnerability of many ladies to men of God. It looks like they don't, men don't have wombs. They don't get pregnant. So a lady who knows that she can be vulnerable, you see a man of God just looks at her. They come for conferences and welfare. The ladies that serve them, after serving me water like this, you just look at her and write as if God spoke. Later they come to meet you in the hotel room, man of God, your message was powerful. The next thing, that lady won't come out of that hotel room again. What kind of nonsense is going on in, in the church? I was speaking with Jake the other day. I said, I don't know how people reason. Aside from the fear of God, I was discussing with Jake. I said, what if I tell you now, let me sleep with you and you run away and say it's not good. Hey, you can imagine. This is what I think about too. I don't know how the men of God talk to the ladies. I was telling Jake. I said, Jake, now... Imagine I tell this girl I want to sleep with you and the lady say, ha, you preached this against us and you ran away. Your, your prayer now will be like let nobody know. It's not, you don't want to sleep again. <laughs> this is how I'm thinking. It, it's my simple thought. It may not be your own, it's my own. In one day, hear me, in one day, that which you have labored for years to build will crash in one day. Bible says, how are the mighty fallen? That's why the Bible taught about the strange woman. It said, she has cast down many. Yea, many mighty men have been wounded by her. So for those of you who cannot see anything, they are passing scared. You are already smiling and warming up that you want to do ministry. You better go and close up yourself and flog it out with destiny. Otherwise, you will receive a root shock. Hallelujah. You see a lady, tell her to come and spend weekend in your house. You say you are, you are prayer partners. What, what is partner? What is prayer partner? Stop it. Stop it. If you are doing it, stop it. I'm not joking. See, this is what kills grace. So you see a man who is fiery. Tomorrow you won't hear anything about him again. I'm not saying don't be nice, don't relate. We relate with people. But that you must take an oath before God and say, Oh Lord, my God, by your mercies, would you help me? It's not by the strength of a man, but let me tell you something there must be a determination. All the guys, stand up. Stand up. Say, In the name of Jesus. Please lift your hands. Say, In the name of Jesus. I receive grace to walk in true holiness. And walk in the authentic power of God. In the name of Jesus. I make up my mind. Not to defile myself. By the grace of God. And the power of the Holy Ghost. I receive grace. To say no. To sin. To say no. 
to anything that will eat up my destiny. I have a glorious destiny. I have nations to conquer. And no Delilah will tear my destiny down. God bless you. Please sit down. Ladies, stand up. This is Koinonia. Stand up. Please, we are, we are not joking here. This is a training camp. Inside and outside, stand up. We need to take this thing seriously. Many of you, when you hear this thing said, you just laugh. You don't know the severity of Satan eating up a man's destiny in one day. Lift up your hands, ladies. And say, in the name of Jesus, I receive grace and power above and against immorality. Say, in the name of Jesus, no man, no pastor, no prophet, no apostle would deceive me and mislead me to abort my destiny. In the name of Jesus, I receive grace. I receive strength to run with the spirit of Elijah away from every appearance of evil. I receive wisdom. I receive courage. And I receive power. God bless you. Be seated and celebrate Jesus in this place. Let's know that there can be real Christians in the body of Christ. For once, let's trust the power that comes upon the altar. That is not every anointing that is polluted. There must be something in your life that distinguishes that you are a genuine child of God. There must be something. The gospel of power. Many of these men, the women in their churches don't rest. You see all the sisters, they are always looking down when he's preaching. Because they are surprised at what he's saying. He has already booked the lady he will sleep with Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Now the guy is standing and speaking and the lady is wondering. I know many people won't like me. But I will say it. You know me. We will say it. Koinonia is where you will hear it as it is. Hallelujah. So there are all kinds of anointings because people have been pressured. All kinds of anointing. There is the one for pulling crowd. Pulling crowd. You rub it on your chairs. You rub it everywhere. Members come and sit down and they cannot understand themselves again. You see people fighting at home. You must come to our church. You must come to our church. Our pastor must do this. Shut up! Is it only your church that God is there? Give people peace. Let the Holy Spirit bring them, not your disturbance. There are many of you now. Some people are angry with you because you didn't come to their church. What kind of nonsense is this? Some of you are even angry at some others because they didn't come for Koinonia. Say you will see. It's pray. If God cannot bring them, you won't bring them. Say you won't come and see our pastor. Abi. You are the ones that make them think we are fake. Hallelujah. It's a year of supernatural exploit. So God is cleaning the house now. Hallelujah. So that when you see, I'm not teaching you to be judgmental. I'm just telling you the truth. Hallelujah. These men don't preach Christ. They don't love God. They have no respect for altar calls. But you see a manifestation of fearful miracles. Brother, something is wrong. I can tell you that. These men have convincing and enticing power. And so it's difficult for you to discern. Hallelujah. Say no man will deceive me. I'm not saying any man you just see fall down in. You, you go for one program and somebody falls and No, they must not behave like me. People have their behaviors. Are you listening to me? You can meet a man who preaches and say, oh, when God says, go, you move. And he says, it's fake. He's not fake. It's just differences in personality. Are you listening to me? A man can preach and jump on this pulpit and sit down and say, this guy is fake. He may not be fake. Oh. So don't you just think, you announce that, ah, I went to one program yesterday. That man must be fake. No. You must not have a man that is as serious as me to show that he's serious with God. No. 
Hallelujah. But there, there is always grace because some of you will be walking in the past. So that's the second category of people. Innocent men who got to mix their wine. The third category, please listen. And this is even the most dangerous. The third category are very innocent people. Listen to me. Because of the innocence, the Bible says, lay hands suddenly on no man, lest ye be the partakers of their sins. Hallelujah. There are many people that come. Many of you like it. You like laying of hands. Anybody you just you say, oh, sir, the oil of your life. And you receive what you cannot explain now. From the day they laid hands on you, a realm was opened up to you. You know this is not the Holy Spirit that opened that realm. So these are the innocent people. Hallelujah. They are innocent. They are naive. But they are entering experiences already that their genuine Christian experience is not supposed to give. And they are moving in dimensions that are faulty. They do not even know. Hallelujah. There are many people with that kind of thing. Praise God. There was a time Ben Hinn's brother, a man came, a proper homosexual. He's a minister too. Proper homosexual. Not, not one who is struggling with something. I'm not talking of those who are struggling with habits and God is helping them. Are you listening to me? The difference is there are people who are struggling with things. Alright? But you see their heart is always open for God to help them. There are others who the Bible says their heart has been seared with hot iron. They have come to a point where they are non-repentant. That's the kind. And he came and he was going to lay his hand on Ben Hinn's brother. And Ben Hinn's brother just looked and saw his spirit together with the man's hand. He held his hand. He said, no way, not on my head. See, have you not seen that there are certain people, the moment some hands are laid on them, they carry on some attitude and characteristic. Suddenly, the, they laid hands on you and you cannot see women and leave them in peace again. They laid hands on you and you start desiring men. Your roommate has packed out. They left only you in the room. Come for miracle service. Something is wrong. Break your pride. I don't care what fellowship or what church you are leading. And come. You see, and another thing is, men of God are not open to admit that there are challenges like this. I'm fine, glory. No, you are not fine. You need help. You need help. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? Could it be that there are some of you seated here, innocently, who became victims of some of these people. The spirit of Christ, when imparted upon you, will bring a true life of holiness and righteousness. We love Jesus. And all your demonstration of power and everything will be more of him and less of you. And so could it be that some of you traveled to Port Harcourt, Abuja, or one man of God came from Ghana, one prophet. The day he laid hands on you, he just scattered your destiny into two. The Lord brings deliverance tonight. In the name of the Lord Jesus. This thing has happened to some of our families. Are you not, are there not some prophets that came to your house? From that day, your father cannot become himself again. Your mother cannot become herself again. The, you will carry your money like this. They are paying your father. He, your mother does not even know. He's going to go and meet the prophet. In, uh, are some of your families not suffering it? Say yes. Because it's not a lie. They brought one candle. They brought one prophetic oil for them to buy. Your father will beat you and slap you and say you must rob that oil. Oh. You must rob it. They said something is wrong. The next thing he had three cars. Now it's only one. Where did two go? The prophet will drive it and enter your house. And say how are you doing? Is well. He knows when to discern when they pay your father. And he just comes. Your mother is tired of him. He comes. He says sorry. I don't like salt in my own fish. Your father says oh yeah 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 yeah. Go and make new fish for the man of God. They come into families and wreck that families. I assure you, they are devilish. I don't care who. Because the true spirit of Christ. The Bible says he gave us the ministry of reconciliation. Not breaking apart. So on one side, we need to walk in the power of the Holy Spirit. As a demonstration of the kingdom. But then we must be careful. Lest our entire attention be upon miracles. And then we allow pressure. That's why I told you that the authentic power of God comes with a process. 
We are talking with John Fire yesterday and I told him, I said, see, the way the church is, listen to me. I read my Bible. Oh. Do you know there are many churches right now, because of the way the church is, there is even no need to read your Bible. Because they don't even give any respect for the Bible. The members don't read Bibles. I follow me now. Nothing happens. And then we have the generation of iPads. You can buy your iPad, but carry a hard copy Bible and come for koinonia with it. Hard copy Bible. Because very soon now, you stop coming with iPad, you come with phone alone. Very soon, you just put two tracks on your pocket. And the next thing, you're on your way to hellfire. Technology should not make us idiots. Carry your Bible and come to church. I know you will criticize me, but I will say it. If your pastor uses iPad, please don't criticize him. I listen to me. There are great men of God, Pastor Chris, Christ Embassy, um, House on the Rock, different men of God. My friend, Pastor Pete Rock. And there's nothing wrong. Buy your iPad. But I'm saying when you get to the madness that you cannot study the word, you cannot do anything carry your bible carry a good notebook you don't carry your ipad to class you carry an exercise book as your teacher is writing you write that's how you become a good student carry ipad and see how many courses you carry over <laughs> hallelujah we're going to pray next week i'll consider what the bible calls the doctrine of balaam we are going to consider it next week. And you will see how that Balaam was a real prophet. But something happened on the way. To the point that the Bible detests three times. The Bible talks about the way of Balaam. It talks of the error of Balaam. It talks of the doctrine of Balaam. From a, an error, it became a way. It became a doctrine. We'll examine it. How that Balaam was called by Balak, the king of Ammon, to go and curse the nation of Israel. And God told him no. But they send royal people with money. And the guy said, hey, you people should sleep first. Let me talk to God again. And you will see that this attitude of men of God has been in the Bible. And the Bible warns in Revelation. To the church in Pagamos. It says, the doctrine of Balaam. You know what Balaam did? I will share it with you next week. Balaam made the, the Moabites. Moabite women to be meandering around the boundary of the Israelites. And the men looked at them and began to sleep with them. And they brought a curse upon themselves. Balaam said, I can't curse them, but I can advise you, Balak, to tell them to do something that will make them curse themselves. And you will see the prototype of what many prophets are carrying in Nigeria. It's in the Bible. Rise up on your feet and let's pray. Just warm yourself for two minutes in the spirit. Inside and outside. Just warm yourself in the spirit. The word of God. Building us. Making us strong. Giving us wisdom. Say Lord I open myself. To the power of the Holy Ghost. Come on, pray. Say, Lord, move through me. Let me become a manifestation of the glory in miracles, in signs, in wonders. Pray. Say, Lord, I open up myself to heal the sick, to cast out devils, that there be a demonstration of the Spirit through my life. Pray, the Spirit of the Lord is upon you, and He has anointed you to preach glad tidings to the poor, to set the captives free, to deliver the oppressed, to raise the banner of authentic power, genuine power, the power of the Holy Ghost. Say, Lord, walk through me. Do impossible things through my life. Lift your hands and say these hands are blessed. Say these hands heal the sick. These hands will liberate nations. 
these hands will liberate families. Lift your hands to the heavens. Say, Lord, these hands will open up the gates of nations. These hands will bring the power of God to bear. These hands will enthrone Christ. Say, Lord, move through these hands. Move through this body. Rededicate your body as an instrument for the glory. Rededicate your body. Say, Lord, move through my body. Every fiber of my cell, a superconductor of power. I open the gates of healing, the gates of breakthrough, the gates of prosperity. Pray in the name of Jesus. Say, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. I'm not ordinary. I'm a walking wonder. I have the name of Jesus. I go in that name. I do exploits. It's a year of supernatural exploits. Lord, I do exploits. By the power of the Holy Ghost. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. 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 Now you're going to pray and say, Lord, put your power upon my lips. That when I speak to sinners or the sick or the oppressed, let a two-edged sword. The Bible says he was upon the horse and out of his mouth proceeded. He said, I have given you the tongue of the learned. Pray. Say, Lord, anoint my lips. Let me release the fire, the power of the Holy Ghost. As I bless, bless the man. As I prophesy, let there be a performance. As I speak the word of faith, the word of healing, the word of comfort. Make sure you are praying. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. One last prayer point and we're out of here. I'd like you to pray. We're going to lift up all the men of God that are being derailed. Are you listening to me? In a vain quest for power, some of them are your pastors. If you love them, lift your voice. Pray for the church of God. They may not be your church members. We don't believe in just denomination and membership, but the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lift your voice and pray. Help the pastors in Abuja. Help the pastors in Lagos. Help the prophets in Portacot. Oh God, we pray. Deliver them from witchcraft. Deliver them from error. Pray for your pastor. You know he loves God. You know she loves God. They are just being derailed. Say, my God, according to your mercy, bring them back. That they will denounce the hidden works of unrighteousness. Pray for them. Don't condemn them. Don't condemn them. They love the Lord. They are just being misled. Pray for them. Mercy, oh God. Mercy. We pray for the church in Zaria, our territory, our Jerusalem. We pray, let there be authentic power upon our pulpits, oh God. Let God's people not be deceived anymore. Through dreams, angelic encounters, reveal yourself to these men, oh God. That they may repent and turn away from every work of unrighteousness. Hallelujah. Let me just add one more prayer point. Sorry, I know we're out of time. There are free buses. You are going to pray for yourself. That you will not start now. See, let me tell you something. Listen. Many of you have not experienced fame. Hear me. Many of you do not know what honor looks like. You don't know what it means to walk and become the subject of discussion. Job said, when I walked, the elders bowed their head when they saw me. The young men talked about me. When my rose was with butter, there is a way God will honor you. 
that if you are not careful, you can shift away. Lift your voice and cry. Say, Lord, help me. Help me, oh God. Lift your voice and cry. There are many of you, you've not even seen anything in your campuses, your little fellowships. You're already bragging and making noise. Say, Lord, help me tonight in Koinonia. That Jesus alone will be lifted. Not E and I, not Koinonia, not your pastor's name, not your ministry. If I be lifted. Lord, grant me a humble heart. Take away pride. Take away vain glory. I don't want to miss it. I don't want to start a wrong movement. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So evangelize like never before. Run away from pride. Run away from it. Let believers know you are genuine. Let believers know you are real. The things you used to do, you can't do them again. Your Christian experience must translate into something that the world can relate with. Hallelujah. I bless you with a deeper hunger for God. A deeper passion. Beyond your present experience. In the name of Jesus, let it be a well that no water can fill up. Let that hunger be a well that no water can fill up. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You must make a commitment to win souls. Hallelujah. I will put that soul winning spirit in all of us. I know that, see, we must take evangelism serious. Evangelism has gone out of the church of Christ. Many things is here now. Money, fame, apostle. God will give you those things. But we must restore the passion. When somebody comes to give testimony and they talk about born again, nobody says anything. They talk about a changed life. People trivialize it. But if you say you bought a new car, people stand up. I'd like you to pray in one minute. I know we're out of time. Say, Lord, if your heart beat is souls, I repent for trivializing it. Lift your voice and pray. My God, I pray that that fire for missions and evangelism will fall upon your people. Let Koinonia be known as a place of radical power evangelism. There are hundred level students scattered. Save them. I deliver you from fear. The fear of men. I deliver you from it. You will never walk in power until you have a heart for soul. Someone saved you. Someone preached to you. You must take the banner of soul winning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If souls do not come to the kingdom, let me tell you we are joking. Are you hearing me? If souls do not come to the kingdom, we can do our jamboree but I tell you, we have no notice in heaven. Thank God for the cars. Thank God for the anointing. Thank God for falling down. But how many people can say, I came to know the Lord Jesus? How many drunkards can you bring to Koinonia? That someone will say, I was a drunkard. You know your classmates. Some of them are not born again. You are, you are not doing anything about it. You are there bragging that you are walking in power. You will never see miracles until you truly need souls. If you are not ready for soul winning, you don't need the miraculous. Whether you are a singer, whatever you are, you must make up your mind to begin to talk to people about the Lord Jesus. What if they get angry with me? Jesus hung naked on the cross. What will you not give up for him? The programs on campus, listen to me. I know there are many campus presidents. Make sure your programs, this session, 
are evangelistic in nature. We are tired of jamborees around. Make sure whatever it is that you do, let there be an ardent passion for souls. You must give people an opportunity to be born again. Say, I'm a soul winner. Don't just get them born again and throw them. Follow them up. Help them to be strengthened. That way, you can know you are doing ministry. Not when you have PA and PA and this and you have... <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. We are ready to walk in authentic power. We don't want to miss out on the kingdom just doing stories here on earth. We want to be relevant to God. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Because somebody's destiny must change. Hallelujah. There are people coming all the way from Lagos. Scattered around parts of this country. You cannot come. God is not joking. The Bible says he has not called the seed of Jacob. There are whole families sitting inside and outside. Trusting God. Let me tell you tonight. This is one of those nights when you will not need to fight. You will just stand and see the Lord of Sabaoth. The battle is in yours, but mine. 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 The battle. That's what God is telling you. Please fight over your family. It's no longer your fight. It's You will be restored. I don't care what the issue is. Are you listening to me? Tumors, cancers, blindness, deafness, lameness, all kinds of demonic oppression. Hallelujah. Activities of wicked spirits that camouflage themselves and cause problem and catastrophe. Barrenness. Late marriage, academic issues. I don't care what it is. The mistake the devil made was to allow you come upon this ground. Because there is a place called Mount Zion, and many things happen there. The Bible says, Upon Mount Zion, there shall be deliverance and holiness. And when all the forces of darkness that attempt to hold on to that which God has declared that is yours are given way. You will enter experientially into the blessing. Hallelujah. Tonight, in one minute, I'd like you to pray. Pray and tell yourself, Lord, this is my issue. Locate me tonight. Lift your voice and pray. Pray from your heart. Outside, make sure you're praying. God wants to visit people tonight. My father, wipe the tears of people. Wipe the tears of families. Let ancient gates and doors be lifted. Once again, let there be an enthroning. Listen to me. Listen. There are some of you that what will be happening to you. I told you God is visiting families. Hallelujah. God will set altars of darkness on fire. 
there will be a separation. The Bible says blotting out every handwriting. Don't tell me there are no handwritings. You ask, the Bible says a hand came and wrote. There are still hands writing and the Bible says blotting out. Hallelujah. God will be visiting people. See, let your heart be open tonight. I know that there are people who are coming just to find out. Is this thing real or fake? Don't cheat yourself tonight because the Lord of glory is in this place. There are all kinds of people in this place. Open your heart and believe that the Lord is king and he will locate you. Refuse to be a spectator. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Rise up on your feet, everybody. We see the rain of your love. We feel the wind of your spirit. Now in the heartbeat of heaven, let us hear. We see the rain of your love. We feel the wind of your spirit. Now in the heartbeat of heaven, let us hear. So let it rain. Tonight let it rain Would you open the floodgates of heaven Father let it rain Let it rain Would you open the floodgates of heaven One more time let it rain shall declare a thing and it shall come to pass when the Lord has not commanded it. Who has prophesied to you that your family must remain in this way? There is a blood that speaketh better things tonight than every ancestral blood of darkness. And I'm going to pray right now and take authority. I tell you the time has come enough is enough everybody shout enough is enough say one more time enough is enough outside I'm telling you what the Lord shows me tonight there will be massive deliverances in this place hallelujah when we start we're just going to move fast so that we will conserve time Hallelujah. Those outside, lift your hands. Just the people outside. Those outside, lift your hands. At the count of three, the angels of deliverance will sweep across and ordinances of darkness. I like you to bring all the people. At the count of three, I like you to shout the name Jesus. Are you ready? Those outside, just the people outside. One, two, three. Hopare katabaladabai. The fire of the Holy Ghost. The altars of Baal. Sheketeke posatai. We set altars of darkness. Shopekaya. Like a mighty rushing wind. Move. The power of God is moving outside. In a mighty way, shake it, take a little to butter. So break it, the bush. I set a place. I set a place. Every power of darkness, every spiritual wickedness, shake it, take it, take it, take it, take it. Every foul spirit, I command you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Oh, God, don't, 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 don
Boshata, Bosnia, the power of God is moving outside. The angel of the Lord moving outside. Make it a place to man. 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 God is shaking things outside. Shaking things. Shaking things. Shaking things. Every power of hell outside. Release God's people. The power of God is still moving outside. Those of you inside, lift up your hands. At the count of three, I like you to shout the name Jesus. Goodness, I see the angels of the Lord. And these are not the kinds of angels I see every miracle service. Hallelujah. There will be a shout, the healer, the instrumentalist. At the count of three, and the Spirit of God, on behalf of yourself and your family members. Are you ready at the count of three? One, two. Every demon spirit, every curse, every ordinary, bring them out. The fire of the Holy Ghost blowing across this place. The fire of the Holy Ghost. Outside, outside, outside. There are still angels outside.
The Lord is releasing people from all kinds of bondages. The power of God is touching somebody outside. In a mighty way, somebody outside. A devil of darkness, you will let her go. Come out of her right now. Come out of her. Devil of darkness. Out. The fire of the Holy Ghost. The fire of the Holy Ghost. It's against you tonight. Hallelujah. this girl go now foul devil of darkness come out of her out you're free in the name of Jesus Christ stand up let this girl go now now foul devil in the name that is above all names. Out you go. Out now. Come out of her. Out of her. Please make sure everyone is connecting. This has nothing to do with falling down. God is visiting people. Look at me. You, look at me. Just look at me. No, you don't need to come out. Just look at me. Look at me. Just keep your eyes looking at me. Let this girl go now. The foul devil of darkness. I come against you and against the infirmity. Come out of her. your night of visitation. Hold my hands. Come out of her! God is going to visit this whole family. Hallelujah. I'm seeing the thing of darkness. This is what God is showing me. 
I didn't even know I was pointing to family members. Hallelujah. Mommy, let me pray for you. Because this is, this is a demonic thing trying to affect your health. Please hold my hands. Mommy, please look. Please, if you can shout Jesus as loud as you can. Can you? Just as loud as you can. Go ahead. In the name that is above all names. Please lay one hand on your chest. Let her go. Let her go. Let her go. This is a curse of marital delay. Let her go. Now! Thank you, Jesus. Come out of her! Out of her! Come out! You're free. Same thing. Come out of her right now. Devil of darkness. You're leaving. I see you in the spirit. You're going. It's time for this family to step into a new level. Be free. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Any lump, lump in your breast, lump anywhere is going to live right now. Make sure you check yourself. Instant miracles of lumps. I, I saw it and the Lord told me it's time. I want to pray it right now. I told somebody to come out. I brought somebody from that room. Who is the person? I told that God will visit her. Not the woman. Do you know why I called you out? The Lord will wipe these tears that you're crying tonight. Are you listening to me? Just look at me. Roll away. Shame and reproach. Roll away. Shame and reproach. Give her a new beginning, oh God. Visit her family. I want to rebuke lumps right now. There's nothing to be ashamed of. This is, this is God is helping people. There are people you've had lumps, multiple lumps in your breast. It's going to disappear right now. Hallelujah. Maybe we'll have a few. Let me tell you something with this lady. You notice she's always coming out. I will see her afterwards. A literal human being appears to sleep with this girl. This is what is responsible. This is, this, is, this is not just an issue of deliverance. This is an issue of help. This is a family thing. This is what the Lord is showing me. This is not just the devil coming. I mean, this is not in a dream. Uh -uh. You see, that's why whenever they come, these spirits leave her, but they don't go away. Early in the morning, they will reappear again. That's it. So, just, just let her be. God will set her free. Hallelujah. Are you ready, Lums? In the name of Jesus. Please, as soon as I pray for you, make sure you start checking yourself. Many of you will be shocked. It will look like magic. Maybe we'll take some testimonies here. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ, every lump in your breast or any part of your body, your neck, your waist, wherever, right now, I command it to disappear. In the name of Jesus, I command it to leave. Be healed right now. Be healed right now. Go ahead, begin to check yourselves. Come, bring that child. Can we have the mic, please? 
what's, what's, what's this? What's the issue? Help us with the mic, please. He has not been eating. Who brought him? Whose child is this? Where is his mother? If we are calling your child, Mama, please come. Let's save time. Huh? They came all the way from Kano. Yes, I asked them to come. You rejoice because you will know you meet God tonight. Amen. Please, somebody hold this child because you too. Come out of her. Out. Hold this child, please. You are the first to be visited all the way from Kano. That devil, this woman is supposed to die before the end of the year. I curse this spirit. Out right now. Out of her with a loud shout you are going. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. What's wrong with the child? He has not been eating. So we take him to the Why did he have all this abnormality? The so, doctors. Madam, look at me. You are delivered. I don't know what it is that runs through your leg. But I'm seeing light. Power of God. Hallelujah. What happened to your child? Talk to us, please. Let's save time. I gave back to him normal. It was normal when I gave back to him. Okay. So when he was four months, we discovered that the front was enlarging. So we went to hospital after a, the scanning. They said that there is water in the head. That water came. Water? Yes. That's hydrocephalus. So we need doctors. Who is a doctor here? Undergo operation. Not student doctor. Eh? Okay, come. Thank you. Sir. What? They say hydrocephalus. What's that? Hydrocephalus is accumulation of water in, in the furnaces of the brain. Okay, what does it what does it lead to this? Yes. It will keep on enlarging until the capacity of the bone is able to contain it. So the bone itself we keep on enlarging and the sinuses that is the sutures we keep on expanding does it have a medical cure um, the only medical cure is to drain the water but even as at that I don't think it has a medical cure for this purpose was the son of God made manifest <laughs> that he might destroy the works of you see the bible says from the beginning it was not so this is nonsense are you listening to me and our job is to bring everything back to the obedience of Christ hallelujah father in the name of Jesus we pray this demonic you did not create look at me come back Leave her, leave her, leave her, leave her. Don't talk to her. She will come back. You will come back with a testimony. This child's head will start reducing. Are you hearing me? This child, it supernaturally, you will see it go back. Are you listening to me? Hold on, I know. I'm seeing a girl, baby girl was my first daughter. I lost her. Where is she? She's dead. She's dead. That's what I said. The spirit of death. You would have died before the end of the year because I'm seeing a baby girl mm -hmm. and then I didn't see her again. Where's your husband? He's in Canada. Get ready. A baby girl is coming again. <laughs> huh? Are you listening to me? Yes. I have three boys. I just gave birth. I was still a boy. I was not happy. That's what I'm telling you. Did, did you discuss this with me? Did you discuss no, this with me? No, Please, no. if I don't call any case, don't start bringing people out. I'm please. You for the first please. Time, I'm but let her come out. If we, if, if we don't call cases, please, we are taking this. I'm, me I'm meeting you for the first time. That's what I'm saying. Knowing me is not important. It's the Lord Jesus Christ whom you know. He will come back here and give a testimony Amen. of a baby Amen. girl. Amen. All right, the flame of death. And tell your husband where is he working? He worked with a school. He and said, then what happened? He's still working. He's still working there. Yes. That's not where he's supposed to be. Huh? We take him to the rightful place. Amen. 
Amen. where God will bless him because this this has been a financial challenge. This is issue of money. Yes. Is that true? Yes. But you people too are not very faithful in tithing, so you must have been faithful in tithing. Huh? Did you discuss it with me? No. You could tithe one today because of an emotional message. The only way God knows. You open the door for Satan. Hmm? Madam, you will go back with favor. Amen. I release upon you that grace for favor. You came with them. What's wrong with his ears? They took him to the hospital. He was. He it's still as a result. It's as a result of all of these things. It's connected. Don't worry. As God is taking him back, there will be complete restoration. Yeah. Hmm? Your son will not. You will come back here with testimonies. Yeah. Who are you? You know them, or you're from Kano too? My elder sister. Your elder sister. Yes, Tell sir. me one thing you want the Lord to do for you. To heal. Think well, not him. You. Don't just talk carelessly. I'm not. <laughs> Not many people will have the opportunity to be asked this question. Let me tell you. To help my family with open doors of favor. Where is your father? My father is late. Where is your mother? Behind them. No, no, no. I'm not saying she should come out. Okay. She's sitting behind them. You are a student? Yes. I finished my secondary school tonight. So I've been writing jumps since. This is what you would have asked. This is why I asked you. That's what I was praying for you. Eh? You have your relatives here, people who know you, who are also praying for you. Hold my hands. Get into the university in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Whatever the problem is, we cancel it here right now. I don't care what it is. We admit you into any university of your choice in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is your number one desire. God will locate your family. Bless you. Where is, please, who brought this woman? Please, if we don't call your case, we are going to, we are going to deal with this. If not, we will have this place very rowdy now. Who brought this woman? Oh, yeah, come now. Who brought her? No, no, don't worry, don't worry. What's wrong with her? She has brain problem. Brain? She lost her memory. She? Lost her memory. She's lost her memory. She doesn't know you now. Ah. What happened? Just her house help. Oh, you are just her house help. Come and help me. Look at this girl. Many house helps. This is the time to plunder and run away, Pastor. May God turn you from a house help to a great woman. This is your own blessing this night. Hallelujah. This is terrible. Thank you, Jesus. That devil of darkness. He will let this woman go. I bring you life. Life to these dead cells, dead brains. In the name of Jesus. Stand up. Stand up. You look at me. Just look at me. Just look at me. Just try to look at me. You come back to your miracle. Find somewhere and keep this, this noise again. Sweetheart, I pray for you. May the Lord visit you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Somebody brought somebody brought a very sick person. for them but the Lord is showing me you brought somebody is he a sick person who is that person inside or outside please let's save time more God really wants to visit people and we don't want to waste unnecessary time here he will come back with testimonies for this woman it's terrible hallelujah 
the Lord is showing me someone you literally feel as though they put pepper in your eyes when you look at light like this it burns you seriously this thing started this year who is that person please who is that person who is that person oh is she the okay come who brought her mama does she, can i speak english or does she want answer come now why are you afraid huh? what's what's the issue diabetes diabetes it's affecting her eyes i will pray for her tell her i'll pray for her and the lord will heal her is she hearing is she here mama i'll pray for you right now this is a spirit be healed of diabetes right now i come against that foul spirit Check herself. Find out that there's no diabetes again. You, you came for yourself. What's wrong with you? Um, it's not that I'm sick. Okay. I need married and. Uh, you want to get married? Go straight to the point. Look, let me tell you something. If we ask you to come out here and we and you are just talking stories, you go back to your seat. Praise God. This is this is a family. Nobody is against marriage here. Is that true? If you came here for marriage, when we are praying, receive it. Don't say my neighbor will look. You don't want to get married. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look at me. Did you hear the testimonies of the marriage? Sir? The marriage yes, testimony yes, do you believe God is still at work in this place? Yes, sir. Hold my hands. Are you in a relationship? Yes, you need to be delivered first before marriage. Hmm? I release you from this curse. This is what has been holding her back. Let her go. Let her go. Let her go. We will come back with testimonies in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, I want to pray for supernatural marriages. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? Some of you will need to outside. Are you, can you hear me outside? You can stand for yourself or for your family members. I want to pray. Make sure the person you want to get married to is of the opposite sex. Hallelujah. Can I pray for you? Please believe the Lord. Because one of the things that has been happening in this place is supernatural inexplainable the hand of God lift your hands hmm. in the name that is above all names now there are some of you as I pray you see some of you what is stopping you is the hand of darkness for a few people not everybody because I'm seeing spirits the moment I pray by the power of the Holy Ghost, the hand of God will come upon some people. Hallelujah. 
it will come upon them in a mighty way that's what is stopping the marriage lift your hands not everybody you can receive but there are some people this is what they need hallelujah when I say in the name of Jesus I just wanted to shout I receive the moment you say that God will visit some people I see God touching two ladies outside on this 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 marriage thing we must deal with it this night how many of you believe it in the mighty name of Jesus now that devil of darkness that is responsible for delay in marriages come out right now come out right now come out right now that devil of darkness that is responsible the power of God is falling that devil there are spirits that are responsible for delay come out 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 these are demon spirits out in the name of Jesus the Lord rebuke you the Lord rebuke you marital delay the Lord rebuke you I tell you God is setting people free marital delay as is happening marital delay marital delay is a yoke of bondage outside the fire of God is visiting a few people all those above 30 30 and above who have not gotten married ladies let God visit you now I release that fire shake the fire of the Holy Ghost the fire of the Holy Ghost let there be testimonies of supernatural marriages this row I see an angel standing there is one lady the power of God will come upon you strong that devil of darkness enough is enough just this row because I see the angel of the Lord standing Lord let that person come out the Holy Ghost will bring you out you will come out you will come out you will come out by the power of the Holy Ghost leave her alone she will come out no. Hallelujah. I want to curse barrenness. Are you listening to me? Now is the time to stand for your loved ones, for yourself. Some of you lived all kinds of reckless past lives. As you are standing now, you may not even have a womb. A new one will come upon you. When God forgives sins, He forgives consequences. I don't care what the biological complication is. I like you to receive. You will come back with testimonies. Hallelujah. Now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That curse of childlessness. In the name of Jesus. I set you free. I set you free. I set your loved ones free. I set you free. Any barren person in this place, any barren family in this place, ma ta 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 ta, re ke te te te, re ke te te te, re ke po shoto, ba koko po te ke, re ke te po soko toba, le ke po yata, ma re ke te 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 te, e ke po ro to pa kata. You will come back with miracle children. You will come back with miracle children. Your loved ones will come back with miracle children. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to pray for a few people. Don't be afraid. Don't be ashamed. 
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God is showing me some people. You've been so you are an adult, but you don't know what happens. You've been suffering from bedwetting. You wake up in the morning and you find out that you are easing yourself on your bed. There's, no, there's nothing to be embarrassed by. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You are that kind of person. Come and stand out here quickly. Forget about who is watching you. Nobody has that time. Let me tell you. There are people like that. A devil of darkness. Inside and outside. This is a, this is a demonic issue. There are people low. There are people don't be afraid don't be ashamed it's a spirit it's not just about discipline you can't stop it with discipline I don't know why God is visiting that situation hallelujah let's take the next case I'm seeing problems with your heart, whether hole in your heart or any form of asthmatic condition. Please come out quickly. Hole in your heart or asthmatic condition. Please let's save time. That devil is a liar. I had an accident. After the accident, they said my heart will enlarge and there is uh, infection. It will, it will go back. Amen. Be free right now. Amen. Heart, return to your normal condition. Infection, go. In the name of the Lord Jesus. As I lay hands on you, whatever the issue is, you will be healed of it. Whether heart, asthma, be free right now. Please make sure you are coming out for the case we have mentioned. What are you coming out for? Putting a hole in my heart. Always, ever since I suffered from ulcer. After Did the doctors treatment. tell you? Yes. After the treatment. The ulcer that we saw me, but it's just for a while. But that whole sister, come, God will visit you. This has nothing to do with ulcer. Hmm? Where's your? You have an elder sister. Yes. Where is she? She's in Abuja. Is she married? Yes. What What's yes. she doing? She's married, but the first child she gave birth to, it has been a problematic child, but. This is six years now. She has not stepped her feet on the on the ground, and she has not started talking. And Let all this why she has not given birth at all. Lay one hand on your chest. See, whatever is happening to one person here is happening to you too. Are you listening to me? You must believe it. This lady with yellow. That lady, you, 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 no, no, don't come out. Just lift your hands where you are. Both of your hands now, are you pledging? Look at me. Father, visit this girl. The Lord is showing me something about her. Lord, visit this lady. Set her free. Jean It's like a mighty rushing wind. That spirit will not stand. It's looking like a knife is going through you. Set her free, Lord. Was 
wrong with you? Lay your hands there. Since when? Just lay your hands and look at me. Don't worry. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Heart. Okay, just hold my hands as I pray for you. You'll be free. Be free in the name of Jesus. Come. We love God very well. What of you is not true. How true is it? <laughs> eh? Shall we see how true it is? Lord, visit him. I break this addiction from your life. Does it make sense to you what I'm saying? Why did you say it's true? You do. Amen. Let it not corrupt your Christian testimony. Amen. God is not just visiting you, but your family. You are in for it with God this night because it's, it's multiple. Some families have put some people in trouble they don't know. Parents in their innocence have gone to do things in a bit to try to help the be healed, be free. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Be made whole, be free. This is what is happening. This thing is all the way from Lagos. This is God setting this lady free. Sometimes we do things. Parents, be careful. You go to places and do things believing you are helping your children. Be free in the name of Jesus. Be free in the name of Jesus. I release you in the name of Jesus Christ because God wants to use you in the mighty healing ministry. Be healed in the name of Jesus. My brother, God is calling you this night. When I make the altar call, before I finish, just run and come and stand here. Right? This is your night. Eh? There is no issue of running to God and then... God brought you because we love you. Okay? You deserve You deserve You deserve The lifting of my You deserve Just walk with me. You deserve. Don't be looking at me. Don't worry. confusion and this is why God is telling me this is how your life is that's why I held you and I was walking God wants to set you free from serious confusion you are easily deceived anybody can tell you anything and that's why I was moving around this does not this is confusion you get easily deceived anybody just say anything and you believe can I pray for you 
Hold my hands, both of your hands. Hmm. Satan, it's time up for you with this lady. Foul spirit. You will let this lady go, release her. You can't stand it. I've seen you in the spirit. God is against you. This demonic thing must leave you. So pakapata. Rekete bola kuso preti kadebosh. That you will have a strong heart. Bible says be wise as serpents. What are you here for, my sister? Oh, while you were praying, you saw yourself on the ground. You decided to come and report yourself. <laughs> what do you think God is doing? Just stretch your hands like you're receiving something. Look at me. Truly, you will receive something. Just look at me. you are receiving spiritual things. <laughs> you can't hold it. It's too heavy for you. For you and for all your family members, may God visit you. God is not done with you. There is a fire that will burn you the same thing will be happening to your family members. You need to be free. You love God, but there are all kinds of encumbrances. This night, this one is not just deliverance. This one is God catching you finally for him. Lord, take over her whole life from head to toe. Take over everything you can take over in this lady's life. Cares, go. Cares, go. Yes, go! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! I want to pray. Just leave her out because she's not recovering soon. This one is not just deliverance. God is taking, I have found my servant David. This is what is happening. When God finds a man, he doesn't leave you easily. He makes sure that you rise up with a hunger that nothing else. I trust God that this will happen to many people in this place tonight. Because I tell you, pastor, a lot of people are in certain situations because they love God but they have cares. So they, are, they, are, they easily become praise. It's not enough to, to be healed or to be delivered. Your heart must be with God for you to walk in sustainable victory. Many people like miracle service. They just run and come and take the miracle and then they run away. But let me tell you something. Your heart come sister. Unto him come who sits on the throne let God find you today are you hearing me to Jesus the lamb who was slain hold my hands father find a vessel in this lady do with her what only you can do ignite a fire in her spirit even as you have revealed to me, let this lady have a, a passion that cannot be quantified. In the name of Jesus, every spiritual weakness leaves you right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lamb who was slain. Hallelujah. The Lord is healing my grain headache. The Lord is healing my grain headache. My grain headache. Intense. My grain headache. 
Where's my neighbor? Is she here? She, she didn't come. Please come. Tonight the Lord is going to visit you. See, many of you don't know that there's something called the season of God's visitation. Precious, yeah. Precious. You are precious. Your real name, oh, the one precious. <laughs> Make sure it's the name your father gave you. Not the one you gave yourself this night. Say, I must be precious. God, you must visit me. Many people threaten me with text messages during the miracles. I say, see, God must visit me. <laughs> Hallelujah. The Lord is visiting you. Hold my hands. This demon of marital delay is going. You will go to a real deliverance, right? Come out! Come out of her! Shataka balata The fire of God is burning your whole body from head to toe. It's a foul spirit. In this area, we are going to celebrate your wedding. It, I'm announcing it this night. In this area, we are going to celebrate your wedding. That foul devil. Come out of her. Come out of her. Come out of her. Secretate. Come out of her. Come out. Come out of her. Come out, you foul spirit. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. Be ye lifted. This is a snake. Look at look at what is happening. Look at what is happening. I see. Look at look at this. This is what is responsible. Shake Come out. Come out of her in the name of Jesus. Zombe ketekelaya. Brata bata kata baladaba. Just leave her. It cannot stand. It's going. Now foul devil. You will release her. There is no hiding. The power of God is against you. You will go and return no more. And as you are going, I call forth your husband. Not a man. Your husband. Your husband. Precious, all of you, all of you have. No, 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 I didn't ask my green to come out. But since you came out, may God visit you. You have an elder brother. Where is he? He's in Abuja. Doing what? He's no, he's doing nothing. He went for holiday. Which holiday? He went to Hosu. Tell him to come back. This is what happens to people. They, they just believe that bread is in a let me tell you if some of you want to run you want to fake this and run to germany can i tell you something the bible says promotion comes neither from the east nor the west because some of you are already planning you just believe you say you are running where to say greener pastures the bible says he makes me lie down in the green pastures is the presence of god Don't feel embarrassed. Okay? May the Lord visit you and visit your brother in the name of Jesus Christ. You will be a great teacher of the word. Huh? You will be a great teacher of the word. Something like light will hit your eyes right now. And God will give you the spirit of revelation. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Open his eyes. Open his eyes. You will be rich, oh. Because you have suffered, you will be rich. And look at me. I'm not just, this is not entertainment. I'm telling you the word of the Lord. Huh? 
never forget the house of God but you will be mightily blessed how it will happen we even make people think you went to diabolic you went and did diabolic things may the Lord bring this to pass you will see it happen some of you don't know that God will use you more than you have planned you just think you will just be passive in the house of God and not do anything no way God knows how to get you he will bring you for miracle service quietly. While you are thinking fashion and business and this, God is thinking fashion plus ministry. It's not just fashion, oh my dear. And beauty makeup is, is, is a serious call. Her name is Precious. Where's your mother? Where? Do you believe God wants to visit your family? Tell your mother to forgive everybody that has done whatever. Does it make sense to you what I'm saying? Who offended her? It was one of our uncles. She said, Abba. To her, she said that he, she used to tell us as her children that, that he maltreated her. This thing, since when she was small when till was now. Small. This is what is stopping her breakthrough. Did you discuss this with me? No. Let her forgive, please. For as long as you keep somebody down, part of you will still be down. Is that true? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. All those who are called into the worship ministry, please, listen. If you come out here, I, I don't mean you like singing or you have a passion. No. I, I like singing. I'm not calling to the worship ministry. You get my point? Please, don't be emotional about, about it. Come and line up here quickly. Quickly. God wants to visit people. I don't know why. Worship ministry will be alive to see you if after this prayer. Worship ministry. Ah. Please think about it all. <laughs> see, the worship ministry is not a hobby. Blessed is he. If there's no space, just stand where you are because fire, there's going to be a restoration of the Davidic order of worship. Believe it. I'm going to stand. Listen, as I walk around this place, the power and is, is fire that will come. It will catch many of you in a mighty way. Lord Jesus, as I begin to take it, take it right now. Take it. Fall. Fall. Take it. Take it. Take the fire. 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 The Davidic order of worship. Take the fire. Take the fire. Take the fire. Take the fire. Shaka baladabakata. Sing like angels. Receive it. It's coming on you. Lift up your hands, all of you that came to the front. My God, let it fall right now. My God, let it fall right now. To those standing at the door, let it fall, let it fall, let it fall, let it fall, let it fall. Take it, take it, take it, take it, take it. Healing anointings. Take it. Make sure you are receiving it. Anointings and graces. Anointings and graces. You will write songs. Many of you will hear songs in your spirit. New songs. Psalms. Hymns. Spiritual songs. Psalms. Hymns. Spiritual songs, receive it. Psalms, hymns, spiritual 
are sons, sons of power, sons of light, sons of grace, sons of healing. Listen. Consecration is the key. Consecration is the key to a life of true worship. Consecration. Thank God for the music dimension. But consecration is the key to a genuine life. You want to stand. Some of you are already looking for money. If this is your ambition, you will not get this Davidic anointing. It doesn't happen that way. Your heart must pant after God and after his kingdom. You must stay in the place of training until he builds you. Oh, let it fall. Yes, Lord, let it fall. Let it fall. As it were in the days of Jehoshaphat. Let it fall. Let it fall. Let it fall. Let it fall. Dimensions. Lord, release it from the east side of the temple. Let there be a releasing songs of power, songs of the spirit. Hallelujah. So that we will do mighty things for our God. Hallelujah. Please go back to your seat. Thank you, Jesus. Did you bring prayer requests? Please pass them quickly. Now, all those who are sick, inside and outside, please, I'd like you to come out quickly. While this is happening, be passing the prayer request. Please, let's save time. Do it quickly. Mighty things are happening in this place. Man de 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 bakoso so so pato 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 prato shupata zike te 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 preke te pele de bush. Please don't be in a rush this night, because what God wants to do, He has not finished. Zizi zizi mene ke te pele de bush. Please, you are sick. Come out, just ushers help and line them up, please, please, quickly, quickly. This is a miracle service. As you come and stand, trust God for your miracle. Trust God for your healing, please. If you are doubting, just go back to your seat. Anybody who is, please play the instruments. Anybody, mic, music director, whoever. Those of you, those of you staying, make sure you are praying for them. As I lay my hands on you, I want to assure you, please believe God for real miracles. Some of you as you are standing Because there is a healing river As you are standing You can't stand that majestic healing presence Of the Holy Spirit It's a majestic presence As we worship in your presence There is healing the Holy Spirit, gentle touch. Help me, Pastor. Please help him with your mic. Is flowing. Jesus, Jesus. We, we believe. Make sure you pass Jesus. your prayer request. Jesus. I tell you, there is a there healing is river. Healing in there is a day. healing river. Holy Spirit, gentle touch is flowing. The moment Jesus, I pray for you, begin to check yourself. We believe Jesus. There is healing in your name, Almighty Power. 
Pastor Williams. Almighty Father, we lift our hands to you to receive the power Be healed to now. do as you would do. As we worship, as we worship in your presence, there is healing. Oh, yes. The Holy Spirit gentle touch is blowing Jesus. We believe. Somebody call in Jesus. There is healing in your name.
rolling down. Make sure you're passing your prayer requests. Those outside, God will soon do something mighty. The Lord is showing me a vision right now. The rain is here tonight to meet you at the point of your knees. one of the biggest miracles that will happen in this place tonight. Many of you don't know what a breakthrough is. The Bible says, and Abraham was old and stricken in age, and God had blessed him in all things. This is what we call breakthrough. Hallelujah. Please, if you have not submitted your request, let me tell you where we got the revelation of this. The Bible says, and they sent a threat letter to Hezekiah. Remember? And the Bible says Hezekiah took the letter and came and dropped it on the altar and showed God the threatenings. And when that happened, there was wisdom that was revealed and they strategized worshippers. And the Bible says that they began to fight themselves in the camp. You will see a lot of confusion as we begin to pray for this thing. I don't mean confusion here. Confusion in the camp of the enemy. Whatever request you brought in this place, I really want, many of you don't know what God is doing this night. God is setting people on fire. We have a few minutes remaining. But God will visit you. We want you to come back with evidences that God touched you. See, when you get results, it's a consolation to your Christian work. Are you listening to me? Those outside, look at some of you standing standing right across i see you god cannot allow you to go back the same way it's impossible you didn't come to meet an idol hallelujah rise up on your feet everybody it's a very prophetic moment right now as we pray i'd like to ask the ministers pastor williams pastor. So. please 
if you've not written your request, drop it. God is doing great things in this place. As we begin to pray on this request. Hallelujah. Pray along with us. Prophesy. Stretch your hands and pray. Tell the Lord, this is my request, O Lord. This is my request. Father, locate people. Locate people, O God. Locate cases. There are, there are difficult cases. Cases of barrenness. Deliverances for families. Lord, this is an altar you have sanctified. In one accord we pray. Just lay your hands across it. As we release the virtue of perfection. Total breakthroughs. Academic breakthroughs. Make sure you are praying. Say, Lord, my request in this is in this place. Locate it. Those online, we are connecting with them also in the spirit. Those following us on all of our online channels. Yes, Lord, we thank you. Release breakthroughs to families. We sanctify these requests. These Egyptians will never be seen in families and lives again. Change stories, oh God. Omnipotent Father, Lord God of mercy and grace, the God who says a thing and accomplishes in the life of his children, the I am that I am, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Who is there like unto you? You are greater than the greatest. You are stronger than the strongest. You are mightier than the mightiest. You are the one who sits in the heavens and you made the earth your full stool. You are great. You are greatly to be praised. We thank you because of this opportunity that you have given unto us, O oh God, to bring down our needs, our supplication, our requests unto your feet. You said in your word that you are able to do exceedingly and abundantly far above all we ever ask, think, or imagine according to the power that is at work within us. We thank you, O oh God, because we know that every need that has been penned down, every request that has been written down, you have already seen it. You have already seen it. And because you have seen it, we thank you because this, this request has seen by the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And we see you doing great things in this place tonight. Thank you for the testimonies. Thank you for the testimonies that are coming out from this pen down written notes. We thank you for the testimonies coming out from this. In the name of Jesus, we bless you because we know that we'll come here next time to give you thanks of what you have done. Thank you Lord because every need Every need, every need here, they are met. Amen. We give you thanks. Thank you, we give you thanks. We give you thanks. We give you thanks. We give you thanks. Oh God, we give you thanks. Lord, we give you thanks. We give you praise. For we know. 
that all things work together for our good. We give you thanks. We give you praise. For by faith we know your grace. We see us. Praise the Lord. My God, as I pray, you gave me an anointing to bless, an anointing to release. Father, as many people as are in this place, inside and outside, they came here home. And Lord, as I speak on behalf of the government of heaven, let these words be so effectual. Let these words be fervent. Respond, O oh God. Every word I declare, let there be testimonies that will return. Every word that I'm about to declare to you, Please, when I pray, I like you to shout amen with all your heart. Because I sense a very strong prophetic anointing coming upon me. I really want to speak from the depths of my heart. I don't just want you to believe it. I want you to return. The Bible says, and the 70 returned rejoicing. Hallelujah. Shiva I want to pray for families. Lift your hands. Let's start with families right now. Please, I'd like you to shout amen with all your heart. Hallelujah. Every family represented in this place, every family, any curse, any ordinance of darkness, every yoke of bondage, afflicting any family I set you free now in the name of Jesus I set families free now in the name of Jesus I set families free now in the name of Jesus I set families free now in the name of Jesus father mother brothers sisters be free be free, be free, be free, be free, be free, be free. Oh, you will come back with testimonies. Anyone here, whether you or your family members, looking for a job in the mighty name that is above all names between today and the next 40 days I place a demand upon the heavens receive miracle jobs receive miracle jobs Receive miracle job for you, for your loved ones. Institutions, 
carry their names in the name of Jesus. I don't care what it is. Any kind of academic, whether missing script. You're on probation, you are trusting the hand, whatever it is. You're doing your project, things are difficult. Whatever academic issue tonight, in the name of the Lord God of Israel, the one who does wonders in this place, I declare. Step into a season of academic victory. Step into a season of academic victory. I release you from any kind of bondage. I release you any kind of academic bondage. Be free. Be free. Be free. Amen. Hallelujah. All those who are due for marriage, whether you or your loved, your loved ones, see, let me tell you in this place, once you are of marriageable age, you must marry. Are you hearing me? Are you listening to me? What did I say? Right. Hallelujah. Somebody married, that's why you are here. You must marry. Praise God. Are you listening to me? Right now, I speak as a servant of the living God. I've prayed about it, but I will pray again. I pray. Some of you, you are a lady, you are pretty. But no man can come around. This is a curse. Tonight, I pray that your wives and your husbands, those of you who, are, who have concubines, and etc. When I make the altar call run out here, because this is what will stop you. You are entitled to only one wife. Say amen. You are entitled to only one husband. Say amen. The spirit of double dating dies here tonight. Leave another sister's husband to locate her husband. Leave another brother's wife to locate him. But I pray. In the name of Jesus, before the end of this year, may there be fearful or inspiring miracle marriage. Take it, take it. God told before December 31st, 2013, come back with testimonies for yourself, for your loved ones. We supply the resources. We supply the grace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Any terminal disease in this place, HIV, whatever it is, hallelujah, infections, all kinds of satanic names, I declare right now, we curse it from the root in the name of Jesus. Anyone there whose genotype is SS or AS in the name that is above all names, be changed, be changed to AA. I change it in the name of the Lord. Receive it. Receive a change of genotype. You will come back with testimonies. Believe it. Receive it. For everything he made, he made it beautiful. Any kind of demonic dreams and oppressions of darkness. Some of you see people sleep with you. Some of you see all kinds of demonic things. Molestations of darkness. I pray right now. The last time you had that dream or that experience, let it be the last time forever in your life. I said, let it be the last time forever. Let it be the last time forever. Satan, I curse you. I curse every foul spirit. Amen. 
all those who are students and are in final year i declare those who need the mercy of god for their graduation i pray right now let policies be changed let something happen in your faculty that has never happened we release you in the name of the lord jesus christ hallelujah i want to prophesy restoration whatever it is that you have lost whether as a result of your past or mistakes opportunities graces i pray that the god who regulates times and seasons let that season come back to your life in the name of jesus in the name of jesus every lecturer in this place or those who your parents are lecturers stand for them i want to speak there are lecturers whose promotions are overdue is that true is that true in the name that is above all names this night we command even offices that are not available we create it for them this night in the name of jesus the bible says and the king sent for joseph and they brought him out of his dungeon the king sent for joseph tonight i connect you with supernatural destiny helpers that will take you from where you are to the next level i connect you i call for the helpers of your destiny financial helpers marital helpers career helpers spiritual helpers receive their ministry in your life in the name of jesus I pray any project anyone is doing here whether you or your whether building project whatever it is for you and for your families you are building a three bedroom flat that's taking over 10 years this is a curse i pray right now in the name of jesus let there be supernatural supplies the beds that brought food for the prophet i command may they locate your family open up the heavens over your family in the name of Jesus hallelujah hallelujah one of the things God is doing in this season is preparing people for dimensions of prosperity that will scare people hallelujah God is seriously looking for men who he will trust these men will not just get well they will be trained the first thing you need is the staying grace the school is not easy let me tell you the truth but happy are you when you pass through it because you will command wealth that will make you afraid I pray for you every curse of poverty and lack there are some of you who are kingdom financiers the power of god will come upon you kingdom financiers kingdom financiers kingdom financiers kingdom financiers now i pray for everyone this cause of poverty that is upon many lives and families that has closed the heaven over many people in the name of the lord jesus this night by the sure mercies of the god of david i command your heavens to be open i command your financial heavens be open be open be open be open be open be open That bring prosperity favor and wisdom hallelujah money comes through favor it is preserved through wisdom the bible says through wisdom is a house built and by understanding it is established through knowledge the rooms are filled with every treasurable thing i pray 
let your hands receive wealth that only God can give inexplainable but undeniable receive it in the name of Jesus let me tell you brothers it is not by power when it comes to prosperity it is not by might it's by the spirit of God hallelujah two more things and we're up I want to pray for favor this is one of the things we enjoy in abundance hallelujah I cannot tell you how the favor of God works no man can explain it but I know it works I know it works I am a testament if you believe I want you to believe many of you, you you are used to suffering you don't know what the favor of God can do some of our family members what you need is the favor of God the Bible says in Isaiah 44 verse 3 it said they got not into their land they got not the land by their possessions neither did their arms save them but because you had you showed favor towards them please believe one encounter of favor I tell you it can it can it can keep you in a position for a lifetime believe it there is something called divine favor what you see today is the evidence we have never paid a dime for this venue the last miracle service I still don't know who paid for the venue this is the favor of God I want you to believe it if you want to work for everything in your life get set to die hallelujah lift your hands let me pray for you favor for many of you to come on you this is what you need I'm telling you this is what you need families what you need is favor not stories my God my God I pray in the name of Jesus the favor that is upon koinonia I take it and I release it to your life take it now take it now take it now take it now I activate favor 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 with God favor with man favor receive it favor koinonia is called the place of intimacy and partnership with the holy spirit hallelujah you cannot come here tonight and not be on fire for god you cannot be here tonight and not be on fire for the things of the spirit hallelujah hallelujah I want to release grace that your spiritual life will stand strong and solid. Many of you, your prayer altars are dead. It's not because you don't love God. Hallelujah. Many of you, one leg in, one leg out. Last year you were on fire, this year. Hallelujah. Many of our mothers, fathers, people at homes, our prayer life, our word life. We are looking for things that only the word of God can give us. But Jesus said to Martha, I said, one thing is needful. One thing. One thing. I want to pray for you. Hallelujah. Alongside with this, I want to pray for the distribution of the gifts of the spirit. Hallelujah. Paul said, I long to come to you that I may impart upon you some spiritual gift to the end that ye may be established. A powerless Christianity, and I'm not talking of just falling out. Christianity with results. Christianity with proofs. We have too many talkatives in the body of Christ. Inside or outside. Some of you have been crying and said, Lord, can't my life not have proofs? Can't the sick be healed through my hands too? Can I not bless people and it will work for them? Hallelujah. 
Lift your hands. I want to pray for you. Hallelujah. I consider it to be an all important impartation. Please get ready because it will come upon you. Different kinds of gifts of the spirit. Stirrings of the spirit. At the count of three. I want you to shout Jesus. At the shout of that name. Some of you will. Will be set on fire literally. So that your spiritual life will be hot. So that God will use you and do wonders. Are you ready? Shout it with all your heart at the count of three. One. Two. Three. Take it. Lord of knowledge. Take it. Gifts of wisdom. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Receive it. I set your prayer life on fire. I set your prayer life on fire. Let the spirit of revelation fall. Spirit of revelation. The teaching anointing. Leadership anointing. Take it. Take it. Take it. Leadership anointing. Jesus. Leadership anointing. Jesus. Oh, Rest to fast. Jesus. Rest to pray. Jesus. Rest to say no. To sin. Rest to say no. To destructive Jesus. habits. Every result that we enjoy in this house may it be part of your life from today. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I release entrepreneurial ideas. There is a spirit. Listen. I take from the abundance of grace that God has given me entrepreneurial ideas that will raise financial giants. Lift your hands, everybody. In the mighty name of Jesus, take it, take it, take it, take it. Jesus. Take it. fruitful life may your life be a fruitful life Amen. may your life be a fruitful life Amen. may God bring results to your life to be a consolation to your Christian work any life that has not been experiencing results that you have never testified may this be your month any life that has not been experiencing results May this be your month. Do you believe this? Hallelujah. I want to give you an opportunity inside and outside. If you've never given your heart to the Lord, please keep standing everybody. You've never made a decision for the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. You've never made a decision for the Lord Jesus Christ. Hear me. Inside and outside, you are hearing my voice right now. You have seen the works of the Lord. It's time for you to get into a real relationship with God. Or for some of you, you have given your heart to the Lord. Hallelujah. But you found yourself derailing. Inside and outside, the Lord is speaking to you. Mother, father, whoever. I want you to leave your seat and come out here right now. I want to lead you and reconnect you back to the King of Kings.
the lover of your life inside and outside right now leave your seats and come koinonia appreciate them as they come everybody thank you thank you they are coming god bless you don't be ashamed don't be afraid god bless you thank you thank you our mother is coming celebrate them koinonia outside don't let the devil stop you mother father whoever yes stand to surrender surrender appreciate them it doesn't matter what your past is god can give you a new beginning don't allow the person you came with to stop you this is the greatest miracle another jesus keep clapping keep clapping they are still coming the holy ghost is convicting them inside and outside thank you jesus we will connect you to the maker of your life i surrender more thank you jesus on to be my God bless you brother and I surrender God bless you Hallelujah I want to celebrate you for your bold decision for Jesus Christ Hallelujah people close their eyes when they are about to get born again as if what they are doing is wrong this is the greatest miracle Hallelujah and I want you to know that we celebrate you some of you are giving your heart to Jesus for the first time Others have given your heart to the Lord, but you found yourself derailing. I want to pray for you. The Lord loves you and he wants to make meaning out of your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your hands, all of you in front. I like you to say after me and mean it from the depths of your heart. Say after me, Lord Jesus, I love you. And I thank you for dying for my sins. This night... I believe that Jesus is Savior and Lord and I accept him. My name is in the book of life. I declare that I'm saved. The Holy Spirit is in me. Eternal life is mine. From today, I denounce sin and Satan and every past life and I receive grace to live the victorious Christian life. My sins are washed away. It's a new beginning for me. Amen. Let me pray for you. Father, thank you. You brought these ones by your spirit. You brought them to bless. You brought them to reconnect them to the maker of their lives. My God, I pray that their salvation will last. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray that you do mighty things through their lives. I pray that many destinies will be blessed. The reason and the purpose for which they came to the earth. Let it be discovered and maximized. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray that every encumbrance, everything that keeps you in the path that is not of God, you are free for me today. There is grace for you. You will enjoy a victorious fellowship with the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We celebrate you. Please, I'd like you to follow the ushers. They'll have your details and we'll send you a text and get across to you. Pastor Jakes is not around, but we'll send, we'll make arrangements and I'll be there by God's grace to see you. God bless you. Please, tomorrow, together with them, all those who have not received the baptism of the Holy Spirit with evidence of speaking in tongues, six on the dot. Please be at the chapel. I will be there to minister to you. Hallelujah. Six on the dot. Be at the chapel. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Please rise up. We are closing. Thank you for waiting this long. All those who are worshipping with us for the first time. Inside and outside. We love you and we believe God brought you here to bless you. I like you to jump on your feet and rush out here quickly. Celebrate them koinonia. If this is your first time. Please, inside and outside, you are special. We have a prayer for you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. All those who invited them, I pray that every good thing will come into your life in the name of Jesus. God bless you. God bless you. Keep clapping. They are still coming.
Thank you. Thank you, Sas. Thank you, Ma. Thank you. Thank you. Keep clapping until they come. They are special to us. They are the evidence that God is at work in this place. Thank you, Jesus. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.